Last time on the USS Kismet, the USS Kismet and the USS Salamander and their crews have taken what time they could to try to regroup. However, much has been learned, and even at rest, all are afraid from the weight of the responsibilities. The command staff are on edge, both within and without, and with the future missions that may lay to test the mettle of both ships. Their choice to decide how the pair of ships will ready themselves for the crisis looming on distant horizons. Meanwhile, Dr. Efrix and Lieutenant Varder have made contact with the Midnight Watch and heard out the agent known as Jessica Solari amidst the ruins of the Weimar Futury Corner. Their choice, to take up common arms with mysterious organization and how much they intend to involve the rest of their crew and not only the rescue of Irene Adler aboard the T USS Tiananmen, but to possibly further the Midnight Watch's goals. At high warp, Lieutenant Myth has commandeered a Romulan scout ship and escaped capture at the edge of Romulan space, her course back to Federation space, and hopefully to return to the ranks of her crew. Somewhere among the many stars of the galaxy, Warrant Officer Kristoff Joker Makarov awakes inside a space fighter with precious little memory of how he got there, or indeed where he is. In the dark and expansive void between stars and time, there lay only choices that may very well change the destiny of all. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> and we will cut to the destruction of the Kismet. No, I'm just kidding. Um, oh. It's in dark. What did we do? If I can get to where... Actually, I just new. We cut up to... I just realized the ship's still in dry dock at the moment, so... Yeah. We cut up to... ESD. And... In EST, we have ourselves certain people willing to meet each other. Because I assume uh, Varder and Efrix are trying to have a meeting with... Uh, last I remember, you both wanted to have a meeting with the captain. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they say with... <laughs> Just so dejected. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah, that was the plan. <laughs> It again, the first thing of the plan was, hey, Captain, we're not talking on the space station. <laughs> also, some isn't there some disciplinary stuff that's happening? Oh, yeah. uh, that has happened. That's already happened. Oh, okay. Yeah, no worry. We don't need to handle that. Just don't want to talk. take the Captain away from the important <laughs> business. Yeah, it's fine. So captain in one of the offices uh, assigned to him and his command staff aboard station while the uh, Kismet is still undergoing its repairs. And in fact, uh, the uh, their Utopia Planitia is somewhat on standby to hear the decision on uh, what the configuration of the Kismet's going to be. But that's that's a future problem. Um, that's a future Grenin problem. Now... Um, Varder and Efrix, when you arrange the meeting with Grenin, uh, do you like try to make sure it's only just him, or do you just meet him whenever whenever he's available, or okay. do you try to meet him somewhere not on ESD? Because <laughs> at the moment where I have you, you're kind of you're the last we had you two. You were in uh, Air, uh, Erfurt uh, in Germany yeah. on Earth, but one it's one walk into it. Think a bus stop. You can walk over to a transporter hub and just where do you want to go? <laughs> And they beam you I wherever mean, they want. I mean, one idea was definitely get our uniforms back. <laughs> so you just you both dress back up in service uniform. Uh, and yeah, you know, like, hey Captain, you gotta come. Well, you know, when you talk to you and you're on the planet and on the station, and I'm terrible at wording things. <clears throat> I I don't think we're being overly subtle about it. It's just like, yeah, we want to talk to you on the planet. All right, are you... Uh, is everything okay, Lieutenant? Um, yes. More super, or less. Super reassuring. 
more or less? Normally, I wouldn't be asking to talk to you unless there was some kind of issue. I see. I'll be down as soon as I can. <laughs> Issue's probably not the perfect word for that, but yep. Uh, so where are you all? To a superior. <laughs> are you meeting in the city of Erfurt? Like, you're having him meet you down there, or? Yeah, probably, like, what, outside Erfurt somewhere. Sounds about right. A clever GM would have thought of that ahead and had a skyline for Erfurt put away. <laughs> I'll just notate that you're not here on Earth. We did consider Oh yeah, we talked about oh, where to where to have the on location meeting group. Yeah. The, the yeah, the the one where the entire cast goes on vacation and they they shoot like like Spain, like but Spain's warm, and shoot like a couple of scenes and then go on vacation. Okay, mm -hmm. um, so, um, Grinny, before you head down to the planet, is there anything you do? Any preparations you make for making planet fall? Uh, let me see. Uh, how long has it been since everything that happened when we last played? You're probably going into the next, uh, either uh, middle, middle of the night or the morning after. It's somewhere in that region. Oh, okay. So even though three weeks have passed for us, it's it's been like no time at all. Yeah, Die. there's going to be a time jump after we figure out a couple of other things, but we have to resolve this meeting. <laughs> right. it'll, it'll, determine what, it'll determine whether you go on the one mission or another one. <laughs> uh, okay, there's, uh, in that case, uh, uh, nothing specific this very second, because, you know, it's one of those, sure, there's probably stuff he'd do if he knew what was going on right now, but he doesn't. Yeah, the, so... the last thing he just finished up, Grennan just finished up in his office was the... Uh, his write up on what his choice was for uh, uh, Commander Penn. So that's been right. dealt with. You filled out all the paperwork largely. I mean, you could fill out the rest of it yourself, like, uh, but you have a stat, command stat exactly. for that sort of thing. That, and ESD yeah. has people. You can get an ensign to do the rest of it. <laughs> you don't need to sign the rest of it. It's just bureaucracy. So you just grab a transporter down? Yep. Okay. Oh. Hey, at least you're putting you in the loot and not just stealing your ship. <sighs> <laughs> Let's not search for Spock this. Well, <laughs> that's a different ship anyway. Um, Let's see. No? Mm. Good. Uh, so, Grenin, you beam down to the into the city of Erfurt, an old German city. Uh, you see there's the uh, remnants of the older uh, structures, but you can see the moder modernity of you know, transporter pa uh, transporter hubs and various people milling around. The occasional security officer once in a great while or just someone in operational orange. They're just around in case, less for security purposes, more in case someone needs help with anything. Starfleet's just around. Mm, okay. Um, and you're in uniform? Uh, yeah, I'd say so. I, I have no reason to not be. Uh, a couple of glances, uh, you, you do draw a little bit of attention because you're a you're in command red. So uh, even the the local citizenry notices a high a ranking person. They may not know the rank off the top of the head. They don't know necessarily know what the pips mean. Some do, some don't. But you know you're drawing a little bit of attention. This is like a general having a walk downtown. It's like uh, or not general, but even a captain's like um, you're in uniform. Uh, 
Okay. But then again, it's Earth. A lot of Starfleet are here. So it isn't, you're not exactly uh, ringing the bells and calling for anything. You know, you're just here. It's just like, oh, not, Starfleet not, captain's here. Not to mention the Starfleet uniforms aren't the most outlandish outfits that people wear yeah. in Star yeah. Trek. Yeah. Star Trek, uh, for Earth standards, uh, Starfleet uniforms are somber in comparison. I'm looking at you, uh, Riker's crazy chest bearing thing. Uh-huh. You know what I'm talking about with the ruffles. Uh huh. Um, so where, uh, where is the meeting? Where are Varder and Efrix waiting for the captain? Like in a park, in a restaurant, in the street, right outside the transporter hub? Park? Park. Person. Yep. Okay, so we'll notate that you're away from the common street area and you're in a park. A restaurant that sounds like a place that Varga will be sitting and looking incredibly out of place. And... Oops. Hmm. I'll make that a little bigger. Man, make that a little darker. There. Ugh, not that color. Uh, Grennan, give me insight security difficulty one as you're walking the streets of Erfurt. Great start. Okay, let me see. Move the sheet. I do not have any focuses that would apply. I mean, I assume this is like, um... To notice something. Yeah, something amiss. Yeah, I don't think I have anything for this. Well, I did it. You get the sense that you do see the occasional operations officer uh, around. Uh, well, you assume operations because gold. They could be ops or security. It's or engineering. It's it's meant to be vague so it doesn't alarm the pop the civilian populace about what they're here for, because everybody wears phasers, so it's not that strange. Um, well, everyone, all Starfleet guys have phasers. Um, so it's not like they're particularly, however, you notice that most of the people, there's a lot of, um, they seem to be security in the area. You do one, it is security. There's a more security than there are ops and engineering people. And they seem to be quietly investigating something. You, Mm -hmm. you, as an, as an experience, as a somewhat experienced officer, you kind of get that sense. You've seen what Starfleet security does when they're trying to investigate something, but without drawing attention to themselves. I see. In that case, I should try to find uh, Efrix and Varder um, with due haste, but not draw too much attention to myself if if that's the uh, the matter. Because I don't know if I don't know if Varder and Efrix are the ones they're looking for. Because well, Varder did not sound particularly sure in that communication with me. It's just Varder. <laughs> Give me, give me uh, either presence security or presence command difficulty two to kind of create the advantage that you're, you're going quickly but not like break net. You're not trying to draw attention to yourself. Haha, <laughs> presence command. Oh my god, my rolls today. This is this is this is what we're off to. Great. Uh, you try to make you try to get there a little quicker, but uh, you end up having you don't know the city well enough, um, and you end up having to right. check the directories more often than not. So oh, you haven't you would, haven't blundered, but you haven't would exact. I, hmm? Would I recognize this from the the reports? Recognize what? This this area is being from the reports of in regards to like the the Adler capture mission because that was a big deal. And I'm I'll sure you, I read those reports over. I'll give you insight command difficulty one because the, it, it's the castle is near Erfurt, but it's not in Erfurt. <laughs> yeah, it's actually one town over. <laughs> but it's the fact that I'm here on Earth in Germany, yeah. like in to Germany's be my security point. officer. <laughs> 
Yeah, I'll, I'll let you roll an insight command, difficulty one. See if you make if you're if he can make the very quick connection there. Yeah, I'll Thank give you. you. Um, so yeah, you uh, remember that um, Wardburg Castle isn't that all that far away. It's a quick bus ride, like it's super close. And they'd either stop in Eisenach or in Erfurt, like those are the two closest cities. Whatever. Erfurt being one of the bigger central uh, hubs. What are you two up to? Whereas Eisenach's smaller and a lot more cultural, so it's there's a lot less places to meet without a bunch of people being around you. <laughs> Whereas here, it's a city, so there are lots of places where people gathering doesn't draw any attention. Uh, Captain's going to quietly tap his comm badge and say, all right, I'm here. Well, like, when, oh, you, when you get to the park, you mean? Or yep. do you see... Oh, uh, when you walk into the park, you find them. They're they're because I don't think you two, I don't think Barter or Efrix are making any effort to hide themselves, and they're in no. uniform. Ah, okay. No, not anymore. We're just like chilling. Yeah, we're really just chilling, having yeah. say a, a weird conversation that the two of them probably had. Between uh, the like, there's what uh, you know the face of Barter, but the one thing that would draw that would catch eye across a park is the teal uniform, which like oh, that's medical. <laughs> so or it's a science officer on a thing, but it's like oh, there's. There's the two people I know. The park isn't ah, that. <laughs> ah, Varder, Efrix, and he's going to go over to them in sort of this way that he wants to make this appear casual. Captain's trying too hard. <laughs> um, give me presence command complication of three, because I don't think Varder or Efrix are making any great effort to appear casual. Super casual. We're just standing here <laughs> talking, like... Uh, so the question is, um, uh, I will, I will use my, I will use my momentum to buy a third die. Okay. Um, here's the question though. Would theater apply as a focus? Cause I'm yeah. trying to put on airs that, uh, I'm not concerned at all. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All of a sudden Finally comes got out to with... use this goddamn book. Good. Hark, friends. How thou doing? There you go. Wow. wow. It's like Captain you're good at... surprisingly relaxed. Uh, so you basically have the advantage that even if your character, even if you, the player, voice alarm or raise your voice, Captain Grennan will be able to play it off so it doesn't look like he's concerned, but can still talk to Varder and Efrix normally. Like they'll know he's concerned, but anyone watching wouldn't know that he's all alarmed or anything. Right. Yeah. I trying to trying to do the thing where if someone walks by it looks like we're just sort of having a oh have fun casual conversation all right what have we got well hmm. there are a few ways to go about starting that, and none of them actually sound very good or appealing. Well, and I assume some of it has to do with where we are right now. Very it's astute, uh, Captain. So, mind telling me why we're in Germany right now? Um, well, Captain, uh, on... My last assignment, I retained some memories from a friend of ours. A friend? The yes. same friend of mine. Captain just sort of quirks an eyebrow. I don't know how much of a hint is going to be tapping the side of his damn head. Ah, uh, I see. With a message to pass on. Oh. To her friends. Ah. Uh, so you came here to deliver a message. Yes. 
And I assume that if that's all there was to it, I wouldn't be down here right now. There's more. Yes, sir. I see. Well, what's the catch? She kind of like does a glance around them to see how close other people are. Give me insight security difficulty one. Oh boy. I'm so good at these. <laughs> I was just about to say the same thing as well in terms of Donald check. Well, is this all all three of us make this check? No, just Efric. She's the one who looked. <laughs> Super casual just turn around. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh hey, it could be worse. My insight's okay. <laughs> yeah, your insight's not terrible. Um, I absolutely don't have a focus. <clears throat> oh go. my god. Well, momentum gained. Hey! Why don't you look around? Um, I'm on high alert. <laughs> twitchy? Who's twitchy? Uh, you don't see anybody around, really. Uh, there's the odd, like, uh, there's the odd animal here or there, but there's not a whole, this seems to be a rather quiet time of day in the park. Oh my god, there's squirrels. Sorry. <laughs> the squirrels are watching us. <laughs> the squirrels have ears. I mean, they do. They do. <laughs> that was the point. <laughs> Well, Captain, we have an opportunity to possibly regain some allies. Set things right. And maybe stick it to some less than friendlies. Which, le which less than friendlies? Because, well, and he lets out a slight laugh. I'm not sure if you know this, Efrix, but I've made a few different enemies over the course of the past year. The same he just put our ship in and, and he says, exactly. and he just says it with this big grin on his face, like that's something he's proud of. Mm -hmm. uh, but... The same um... we just put our ship in dried off, Captain. Hmm. Right. But it would mean aligning with ourselves with um, <clears throat> some friends of a friend. I see. And our present uh, question for you more so would be either we get leave and we disappear off uh, <laughs> to do our thing or we... Uh, Request the Kismet's assistance and just go along with it. By request, I mean we go along with the entire Kismet. That's that's going to be a very difficult thing to pull off. For, well, one reason. I've been given very clear orders in no uncertain terms that... I and Captain Kiddick are not to involve ourselves in the current ongoing situation right now. We are to distance ourselves with the from the incident that just occurred while things <sighs> quiet down. That is, I suppose, what you might call a wrench. It's difficult. I want to help. I really do. But as things stand right now, this is something I want to move past at the same time. But it's clear that it's very much a current and present threat. I... 
would say moving past something is generally far better when it's resolved. Right now? No. Better to I beg forgiveness and then ask permission. Oh, uh, well. That is something I've been very good at, Captain. Hmm. I have an idea of my own. It might take some wrangling on my part uh, in terms of uh, the Starfleet bureaucracy, but I have an idea. Mm -hmm. The orders only apply to Captain Kiddick and myself. Ah, I see, Captain. If through the Starfleet bureaucracy, I could find a way for Captain Kiddick and I aboard the Salamander to take on some sort of, let's say, high profile job. Perhaps some diplomatic situation that needs to be resolved. I'll see what I can dig up. I could perhaps keep ourselves in the spotlight while you and the Kismet handle the situation discreetly. I'm not too aware of how the inner workings of politics work, Captain, but that sounds like something that would be perhaps the best idea, or at least the best solution. Um, for how do I say this exactly? <laughs> if this does go through, I'll anything run the that happens difference. on the kismet, I can claim responsibility for in your absence. On the contrary, I might have another idea as well. As Angry as I am with him right now, I'm going to see what I can do uh, in regards to getting penned uh, back onto the bridge to assume uh, command of the ship during this matter. That should be entertaining, Captain. As I said, I'm about to have to go jump roping with red tape. Um, as a note, whatever we found did put us in dry dog. <laughs> Nelly destroyed all of us. I doubt we're going to be able to be doing much talking. Right. I'll see what I can do. Thank you, Captain. And sorry to get you more involved with what I imagine you would rather leave behind. No, it's fine. You're trying to do the right thing. And let me tell you, as someone who's been there and back, doing the right thing is never as straightforward as you'd like to as you would like it to be, but sometimes you have to rise above that. Now, uh, shall we go somewhere? Yes, I think that, um, I think that as far as this goes, we're all set. If you want to uh, continue with your shore leave, you're welcome to do so. I have a number of matters to attend to now before, uh, uh, before the repairs on the Kismet are able to go any further. Oh, Captain, one thing. Uh, yes, Doctor. Uh, and she kind of reaches into the pocket of her uniform and pulls out <clears throat> a piece of paper, actual paper, and hands it. Oh, um this 
my bo- my uh, my daughter drew this for you. Oh. And he opens it up. And it is a ten-year-old's drawing of the kismet. Oh. <laughs> That's getting framed and put in this ready room. I'm telling yep, you. Yep. Um, oh, how precious. She knew we were sad. She didn't know why. <sighs> she has a future as an artist. He smiles. I think she has a future as a uh, counselor, but. <laughs> it well. runs in the family. Ah, this made my day. Thanks, Doc. I thought it might, Captain. Ah, anyhow, uh, as we were. Sir? Uh, as I said, uh, you are all welcome to go back to your shore leave if you wish. Uh, as I said, I have matters to attend to on... Uh, ESD. I don't know if it's a well, I'll probably looking around Earth a little bit. Right. So people start going their separate ways, or? Yeah, I think so. I think Barter and Everett yes. are still just walking together, but yeah. <laughs> Let's go sightsee. Yeah, it's like, hey, you want, she wanted to go to Spain, right? <laughs> I think we had to inform Lady of... I think that's... I will yes. inform her of once we're actually confirmed and what, with one thing or the yeah. other. Yeah, she gave us 24 hours. Yeah. And it's only oh, been, okay. like, yeah. five, so... So it'll be like, okay, well, we'll wait. 20 hours and see what's happened by that point kind of thing unless we get informed of a choice before then. Until then, I don't know. We'll go to Spain or something. <laughs> wait. Wait a second. I just had a realization. Um, because the Tereshkova is a galaxy class ship, does that mean that there's a Captain Elder Day? Uh, that's, that's something that's actually instituted uh, by different ships for morale. So it depends. They might. Your ship could have a Captain Grenadier Day if you had enough children aboard and you wanted to yeah, I was going to say, I don't think we have the children compliment. I don't know. Everyxen doesn't bring all of her family aboard. There you uh, go. Uh, no, it... no, we're not doing that. Remember what <laughs> the threat was? I know. Last session? That was just a joke. Also, about our, family ship size. Get, our ship just keeps getting blown up. I'm yeah. bringing my family on board. <laughs> Generally speaking, uh, there are, so, unless there's specific standing orders by the captain, uh, People bring their families along because in deep space uh, or what family they're willing to bring along just because it's like, yeah, you're not going to see them for like months, if not years. So yeah, right. either you're never seeing them for the next while or you bring them along and they're part of our civilian complement because you are uh, explorer ships first. Right. Well, although technically we're not, we're not an exploration vessel. We're you're diplomatic. Starfleet. We're a fire hydrant. Your Starfleet. All ships are exploratory. We're a, we're a fire hydrant. <laughs> the rare exception is like the small ships where there's not a whole lot of room, like Sabres or Defiance. It's yeah. like, look, we barely have enough room for the crew. If you want to have your kid with like one family member with you or something or a dog, go ahead. But dude, there's not enough rooms. <laughs> yeah. Or like on, ship- or on like, um, yeah, anything that's like scale three, like the Hadfield, there really yeah. isn't anything in the way of family aboard. Yeah. It's very bare bones. Where something big, it's like it's a small city. <laughs> it's right. a, there's a, a small town. Anyhow, so that's where that is. Uh, I think uh, unless there's something I'm needed for right this second, I might go have my dinner real quick so we could hop to someone else like Joker. Sure. Uh, actually, what I will check in with. So uh, we'll come back to you later, there, Captain. Uh, so you go poof for a little bit. You're busy. You two are relaxing somewhere. I shall note that with relaxation. Not in a rush anywhere. You're just kind of relaxing. You're busy with command stuff. That's where you are. That's where you are. And 
and I should check Stand in by. briefly with Commander Pend locked away in a brig cell aboard ESD. I mean, I'm I'm in a cell. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I like how the crows were heard the second that was said as well. <laughs> a new scene here, so lose more momentum there. Uh, can I call to a security guard? Uh, just give me a moment. Setting the. Uh, yeah, there'd be a, there'd be a guard or, uh, wandering around every so often just to check on you and various other people who are in the brig. Um, like, it's a big brig. The drunk tank. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm, I'll ask him. Not quite that big. Could you contra contact Admiral Mayor, please? Uh, I certainly can, Commander, but, uh, what should I tell her the uh, cause is for? I require a private conversation about on ongoing operations. Uh, one moment, sir. Takes out a pad and briefly brings down the force field to hand you the pad so you can write out your intention. Um, you're basically you're filling out a request form to talk with her. Yeah. Um, I'm going to call this presence, com uh, presence con or command uh, difficulty three because you are brigged currently. So it is a little harder to get people to do things when you're unable to leave the room. Yeah, that's fine. I'll give you a threat for bold command. Sure. Uh, can I get a wave? I have an operative poker face composure or intimidate. Uh, no, not intimidation. Uh, I could take composure since you're trying not to come on too strong, I assume. Like, order her to come down here or demand she comes down because you get the feeling that won't go over well with the Admiral. Okay, I'll roll, and if I need to, I'll determination. No, oh, that's good. I'll reroll the zero. Screw it. Nope, there you go. Two momentum gained. Okay. Uh, after a short while, you do. the officer comes back. Um, uh, Commander, it would seem that uh, Rear Admiral Nia is not on ESD um, if you wanted to speak with her in person, uh, but it does seem uh, that her the fleet liaison for your for the tenth uh, when Commander Joan is here, but if you wish to speak with the Admiral, uh, that will take some time to arrange. Question, Jim: Would yeah. I trust Joan? Like, would I have any reason to think he would be with Azalon's group? Uh, actually, I'll make give you insight security difficulty too. Because you've met him once during the Battle of the Ark, but that's pr I think it's the only time you met the guy. Uh, I'll give you a threat for to proc bold. Okay. I'm back for like 10 minutes. Uh, intelligence operative focus? Like, is he, is he one of us? I'll give you that, yeah. I gotta find his darn picture again. Yeah, no momentum. Um, you remember looking over his record sometime during the uh, during the Battle of the Ark, either directly after or what have you, like some period since then. You looked him up because you didn't know the guy, um, and he's known as a uh, he's not he's known as a he's a Rysian who is very pacifistic and has been a, a uh, an advocate for uh, demilitarizing. Uh, Starfleet in general um, but he's also he's also known for designing battle stratagems during the war like if he has to go to war he, he's a reluctant soldier 
uh, sort of person. Um, very against what Aslan would, what you know of Aslan, what she likes. It, this is the kind of officer that would drive her nuts because um, he would be constantly taught, bringing up Federation charter rules, the law, calling for restraint. You know. He'd get along well with Grenin. Yeah. Uh, if that's the case, yeah, he's fine. I would ask if he could meet me in a dead zone. A dead zone? The communications dead zone. Oh, okay. Uh, for two momentum, you could possibly get him to do that. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay. Bit more time passes. Uh, eventually, Commander Joan comes in. Command red uniform, three pips. Your commander penned, I believe. Correct. I assume you're Commander Joan. Yes, yes. Um, oh, yes. Uh, dead zone, right? Um, he taps at the pat, taps at the side real quick. Brings on the force field. It pops on behind him as he comes into the cell. Uh, computer, activate security protocol beta three, please. Thank you. And you can hear this. All the sound outside of the cell is lost, and all you can hear is this weird white noise kind of crackling at the edge of your hearing. Well, I assume you know what my relation is to Admiral Asalon? Uh, I would say so, yes. Your uh, mother, as I recall, and a uh, rather troublesome connection, I must say, but, you know... One doesn't judge for the sins of the father or the mother, I suppose, in this mo matter. True. Well, as you can see, I've just uh, quite publicly picked a fight with two captains, including my own. Quite a disgraceful sight for an officer, wouldn't you agree? I, I'd, uh, I mean, one could say such a thing, yeah. I mean, it, I, I'm aware of the situation. I, was, I uh, actually had the... I just got off reporting it to Admiral Nia, so that was a fun conversation. Thanks for that. How would you like another fun conversation you can have in private with her? How do you feel like me betraying you? I beg your pardon. Exactly as I said. How would you feel like me betraying you and Starfleet? Um, I wouldn't suggest doing that since that's a crime. Kind of tilt his head a little bit like, what? <laughs> well... What's the best way to get someone on the other side? Oh, it's one of those plans. That's insane. <laughs> I mean, true, but I have a solid cover over here. They don't mistrust me. And I have the perfect in on the other side. Oh, jeez, Pat. Kind of paces and back and forth a little bit in the small cell. Now you understand why we need a dead zone. Yeah, no kidding. Um, how would we even get you there? Well, I would assume before the fleet moves on Narendra, where they're based, there'd be a general call to arms at a starbase, correct? One would assume, say, yeah, or some shipyard or another. Well. At that time, if certain protocols were put in place on certain vessels at that meeting, it may be possible for me to take a couple of high-ranking officials as hostages, quote-unquote, and defect. Oh... <sighs> I'm not gonna lie to you. I don't like this plan. I do not. More, not so much for. I mean, we could find people that we could safely give over to you. It's not the first time we pulled a stunt like this. It's a lot easier to pull it off when they're not changelings. But you know. Uh, but yeah, I. Uh, we put you out there. We have no infrastructure out there right now. That's. Uh, I don't know if you've been briefed, but uh, we are planning on something, but 
it requires a certain level of uh, time to set it up, and uh, you'll be going out on a limb. I mean, how much of my service record have you access to? Have you the entire thing, or just what's available to most captains and commanders? I've been given what is tactically relevant. I gave, I actually had got a, the last time I had a, as much access as I've ever had with anyone was uh, back during the Battle of the Ark. Um, so there are certain things. I've been briefed enough that I can be of help to the Admiral, if that makes any sense to you. Um, There's certain things I'm not briefed on because it is not a good idea to have the fleet liaison who talks with all ships to know everything. Uh, that's a that's a security re breach waiting to happen. So if you're about to tell me something that another ship should know, I would not advise you to tell me. <laughs> Let's just say I have probably more experience in Section Thirty One than most people have experience in the Starfleet. Years. He narrows his eyes at you for a second. He goes. He stops pacing. He's just staring at you now. Are you with Section 31? I mean, until they technically kick me out. Oh, not to be blunt, but I didn't realize you sort ask permission for such things. Well, I'm only asking permission because what would be a higher target than an admiral as a hostage? Which admiral? Who are you serving under? That's not happening. Not on my watch. Well, I mean... That's why I'm talking to people who can help put something together. <sighs> I'm not in danger. I, I can't possibly advise the Admiral to endanger herself. Um, well, I... There's probably some other commi high commissioner or fleet captain or other admiral we could probably put into it um but i do not i could not possibly uh, approve of such a matter with admiral nia that would be endanger the fleet as a whole i mean even getting another admiral to agree to this is going to be a headache especially since uh section 31 doesn't exactly have a sterling reputation these days well not as that they always as, did but you know as it stands i stole something from section 31 and handed it to Grenin. So the Kismet and Grenin trust me implicitly. Apart from indiscretions, which, you know, tell her, right? So if I can hand something that could convince them I was playing this side, it has to be a juicy enough target that gets me onto Narendra before a strike happens. Um, give me presence command, a uh, difficulty of three. Joan is very reluctant to trust section 31 in any capacity. And in fact, this is news that you're ever section 31 to him. So he, this is a surprise for him and he's not happy about it. <laughs> he's somewhat annoyed. No one told him. <laughs> well, he, he didn't need to know. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't like that answer generally. <laughs> That's how Genesis devices get taken apart. Well, I'll give you a threat straight away so I can proc bold. Mm -hmm. Could I get away <laughs> with intelligence operative? Yeah, you're used to having to sell weird plans to officers who aren't a big fan of intelligence or even Section 31 for that matter. Uh, can I spend the two momentum for a fourth dice? I mean, you can, yeah. I'll re-roll one of those zeros. <sighs> okay. You talk with him for a bit more, selling him on it and getting him to not be... you Because you can get the sense that he's... This is an officer who's not a fan of the idea, but eventually... 
he says, all right, well, all right. I can do this one of two ways. Um, and because I'm only fleetly as an officer, I can't mobilize forces on my own. I just pass the right messages to the right people. And I wasn't given leave by the Admiral to do anything like this yet. So I either have to talk to your captain because officially uh, you're supposed to be in here for the next while. Or I head back to fleet command and I speak with our intelligence officer and we try to hash out some plan to sell to the Admiral. You've convinced me, but I have to... I have to get someone else to, I need someone one rank higher than the both of us to sell this to the Admiral at the end of the day, whether that's the Intel op or that's your captain. Uh, you tell me, who do you think is the better bet for this? I think the least, the less captains and members in the 10th fleet know about this, the better. So if you need to take it to an operative, that would be the best suggestion. Whew, all right. Um, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, I have to meet up with him and then back with her and then get back to you. So, yeah. Um, you'll either be hearing from, uh, myself, the Admiral or the fleet intelligence officer. And, uh, we'll work out the details then. Officially speaking, we're just debriefing you on your, your service and, before your incarceration. Uh, so if anyone asks, that's what's going on. And that's not that strange. Nope, not oh. that strange at all. Oh. <sighs> well, is there any other great news you have for me, Commander? Are you secretly a changeling? Vorta? Mirror Universe, maybe? I don't know. I mean, I do sometimes get the inclination to try and go for galactic domination, but I think my mother's already beaten me to it. No kidding. All right. Very well, Commander. Hopefully I'll have good news for you soon. Either way, you'll know the answer. Understood. Computer, resume regular programming, please. Pen's just going to lie on the floor. He looks at you. I like how that, where there's a bed... Also, yeah, I'm in the drink tank. Like I'm gonna be able to lie on a bed, Commander. Right. Uh, Joan Protocol two zero Alpha five, please. The force field comes down briefly and comes back up behind him when he steps out. We'll be back with you soon, Commander. Just don't go anywhere. Just look at him. Yeah, I'll, I'll stay here. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> All right, so that scene's over. Uh, we're actually going to cut over. Joker, I believe you're with us. That's affirmative. Cool. Not a pick on you. Um. So, I mean, uh, yeah. No, I said what I said. <clears throat> Oh, no, that's not it. Wrong music. This one? Yeah, there it goes. Boy, I wish I could hear it. Okay. There we go. Okay, this one. We cut over to... One sec, let me play it on YouTube. What's the song called? Uh, Into the, the Deep by the... Tabletop Audio. It's a subdued, like, atmospheric uh, thing. If I could find out. Uh oh, I put you somewhere. Where's your. Oh, there you are. You're over on this page. Whoop. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm looking on YouTube for it. I found their channel. Uh, 
Uh, but yes, Joker, uh, you wake up inside your fighter. The, I believe it's called something or something. The, the last, last laugh. laugh. You are in your, in a flight suit. Uh, you kind of blink yourself awake. The last thing you remember was the Kismet was under attack. Uh, there was a call to, to battle stations. Something about severe damage to weapon systems. You remember rushing to the shuttle bays to get into a fighter. There was an explosion. And you remember being the whole, uh, the uh, fighter tumbling like crazy. And then you kind of blacked out. And now you're here. With, you can see that a lot of the lights seem to be dimmed into some sort of uh, power saving mode. Because you haven't been touching, uh, presumably because you haven't been touching the controls for a long time. Computer, how long has it been? It has been. Uh, the lights start uh, lighting up around you. Oops. No, 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 no. Something's rolled the wrong thing. Four weeks. And then it goes into further detail, but you get the gist that it means four weeks. It's been about, about a month. Oh, Christ. Ah. <sighs> Where am I? Unable to determine. Sensors damaged. And looking out the cockpit window and you look around you, uh, you don't see any familiar stars or familiar planets. You're out in open space. And you don't see the ship. You don't see any ships anywhere other than you. So I'm going to check over the damage to their ship. Uh, give me insight engineering difficulty one as you start diagnosing what's wrong with the ship. As there seems to be a variety of alerts that are popping up. The minute you start pulling up, you get a bunch of warning alerts of various things wrong with the ship. So it's a matter of sorting out which is the most important thing for you to care about. Small craft focus. I'll give it to you, yeah. Uh, gain two momentum. Uh, it would seem that you have damage to your engines. Your engines are damaged, your weapons are damaged, your sensors are damaged, and your communication system is damaged. So I can't even broadcast the distress signal. Great. Uh, you can, but uh, uh, the ta uh, basically when something is damaged, um, the, to attempt to do it, it's the base difficulty plus two. So even if it's a difficulty zero task, like, hey, ship, where am I? It can't do that automatically. You actually have to help the computer figure that out because it's a base difficulty of two for it to figure out basic stuff. <laughs> so anything to do with engines, weapons, sensors, or communications is an increased difficulty until it's repaired. Sure, yeah. Let me just jump out of the ship and... In theory, you can even walk. Flight suits are equipped for that sort of thing. It's just, you know, generally it's not advised unless you absolutely need to do that. <laughs> On the plus side, your computers and structure aren't damaged, so you don't have hull breaches or damage to the computer core. So 
that's why the computer's talking to you and why you're not uh why you're not hearing uh, atmosphere alarms Um, I guess I'm going to start with checking how damaged the engines are by pushing the throttle forward. Uh, you get the feeling that even if you, uh, you notice that there's a slight imbalance in the, uh, power distribution. So power is getting into the uh, maneuver thrusters and the engine assembly, but uh, even some... Uh, actually, uh, I take that back. Your ship is effectively uh, at zero power. Um, so you're only running... The only reason you're not talking to nothing is because it's on power safe mode. It's that it can't do any actions until it has some power, so you can't even move forward because there's not enough power in the system because if you use it up, you'll lose life support. <laughs> Even my independent phaser power supply? Uh, actually, that wouldn't, because it doesn't use up power. You're right. So is the phasers it, could still fire. <laughs> is there a way to reroute that? Manual override that shit? Uh, well, that is a way to... Re that's a way to repair things from inside. Um, so what you could do, without leaving the cockpit, you could tell the uh, reroute the power from the independent phaser system into the engine powers relay. Um, it will be a difficulty uh, three task of daring. Uh, you're a flight officer, aren't you? Like flight uh, flight controller as your role? Or am I wrong? I forget. Wait, let me. Because <laughs> I don't even remember anymore. Keep... Oh, yep. Flight controller security supplement. So you actually can use uh, your engineering or con because you're trying to get the engines to work. Um, now, the downside of doing it this way, in exchange, uh, if you get the engines to work, you won't have you won't benefit from independent power supply until you get out of the fighter and actually fix the engine properly. But this will work. This will the, the independent power supply becomes the energy, the power system that you're using to power the engines. Well. I'm not going to be able to fly anywhere until I realize where the hell I am. Yeah. So I guess I'll switch that over to the sensors. Okay. Uh, so you want to try to pick... Say again? <clears throat> I'm sorry, you go ahead. Uh, so you look over at the uh, sensor system. Uh, what are you trying to do? Uh, bring power from the uh, phasers to the sensors and then figure out where I am in relation to anything. Uh, we can do one of two things there. You can either attempt reason science difficulty of two to do it even though it's damaged. Um, as for the uh, rerouting power to the sensors, that won't work because the problem with the sensors isn't that it lacks power because it doesn't take power to, to do a sensor sweep. It's gotcha. that the sensor array is damaged. So the actual like physical stuff is damaged. And it's difficulty of two. Yep, assisted by the ship's uh, sensors plus science, which is seven. And if I... All right. Well, small craft would still work with that, right? Or uh, onboard he's... navigation system? I take onboard navigation systems, yeah. All right, reason science, difficulty two with 10 put together. Any complications? And actually, I'll call this reason con because you are tr you're doing a navigational. You're not doing a sweep for ships. You're trying to figure out where you are. So reason con and the ship will help you with sensors con. Gotcha. Uh, diff two. Oh, yeah, we're off to a great start. You do your best to try to figure out, but... The sensor is just so much mess. It's hard to figure out. Like that star is in the wrong spot. Like off the top of your head, you're getting. You'll have to like start fiddling with it to get it to work properly. You could tr attempt to try again and fix this, but the difficulty to attempt again is increased by one, so it would be a diff I'm, three. I'm gonna smack it real quick. <laughs> uh, 
Um, you smack it. Uh, thankfully for you, uh, Starfleet builds these things pretty sturdy, so you don't really damage it. Concussive therapy didn't work. You could attempt uh, Daring Engineering, uh, Difficulty 2, Complication 2. <laughs> yes. Let's do it. <laughs> Punch the ship back to life. <laughs> you, it kind of flickers for a second and resets back to, no to normal. That is to say, back to the wrong answer it was giving you earlier. <laughs> Are there any planets near? Not that you can see. But then again, space is big. You could be a light year away from a planet, which is a relatively small distance, but you wouldn't be able to see it with your naked eye. Um, how would I go about putting out a distress beacon? Uh, that would be a engineering a uh, control engineering task uh difficulty oh can you hold on i think you need power to do that let me check i know we don't worry about power resources for ships i don't even think about it that much but when you're at zero there's <laughs> a few things you can't do thankfully when you're at zero power you're not completely dead but you're you're limited uh to hail somebody costs no power okay good so it is a control engineering task difficulty of two assisted by the ship's communications plus engineering and i'm gonna can i use small craft focus because i made the ship like the back of my hand i'll i'll take that at increased complication yeah i'm not gonna do that because i I'm in a metal coffin. <laughs> okay, the ship can actually try to help you. Oh, uh, what? Oh, never mind. It does not. <laughs> so I just imagine Joker in there just banging things, yelling at Orion. Can I try concussive therapy one more time? Uh, for the communication system or the sensors? Yeah. Sensors. Uh, at I would call it daring engineering difficulty three, complication three, because you actually might damage something. I mean, we do have some okay, momentum to spend. Oh, I didn't even see that. Okay, I'll spend a momentum. Uh, onboard nav. Can we just say a quick prayer real quick? Don't fuck up. No. We didn't roll a complication. <laughs> I mean, you could possibly spend your determination to re-roll. You're getting to the point that you get you get the feeling that if you keep hitting this thing, you might start damaging something. Uh, so you, uh, you'd actually have to... You get the feeling that the problem isn't something you get at from the cockpit. It's something you have to get at from outside on the hull of the ship. Uh, All right. Opening the cockpit and checking out what I've got. Okay, uh, we're making the assumption, without any extra cost, you have, in effect, an EVA suit, but not as bulky, because you need to be in a fighter. Um, and I'm going to ask you for a fitness plus con difficulty one to navigate, to make sure you secure yourself properly and move across the body of the ship. And close quarters combat focus, because grip and whatnot. I take it at increased complication.
I might be floating away, boys. <laughs> Let's do it. There you go. Oh. You safely manage to extract yourself from the uh, cockpit, and you secure yourself and tether yourself to the ship. So even if you do fly away, you can still kind of you'll be caught and you won't drift to your death. All right. So let's see what's going on with my ship. Uh, what are you going to examine? What are you going to try to fix first? Sensors. Okay. Uh, this is going to be a uh, control engineering difficulty of three to fix. Yeah. All right. I'm going to spend the momentum. Uh, I was going to say onboard nav, but I'm not really looking at a nav system, am I? No, you're, you're just repairing now. You need something like damage control or something to that effect. Or small craft. I'll take small craft at this point now that you're outside and doing small craft repairs. Bet. I mean, thank you, sir. <laughs> Come on! I'm spending a determination. Okay. What To what value? Uh ready to go. I was prepared for that screw up. Sure. Are you kidding me? Damn. It's, it's, this game does not want me to get these sensors back online. <laughs> it really doesn't. Uh, do you have a normal milestone you can spend? Oh, let's find out. I mean, there's also a like an option, bad idea if you'd like to hear it. Oh, I love bad ideas. Well, s s uh, stations, planets, ships can usually pick up weapons fire, correct? Oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> you have an independent phaser bank. <laughs> flare oh gun. no. Let flare gun. Yeah, let this off a is flare. What, this is what I come back to. Flare gun. I said, hey, I preface this with a bad idea. Can I fix my engines first before I attempt this? In case I get you can try to, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you can try. It would be control con or engineering difficulty three. And by the way, I'm not charging you for like having an engineering kit. I'm presuming that in a fighter like this, there'd be a, like an emergency repair kit like in the seat with you, like there is in actual fighters. I thought that was called duct tape. Well, that's in the kit. Uh, duct tape and a message from someone from the Everest that says, "Good luck, bud." Yeah, really. <laughs> if you're opening this, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'm gonna use the other momentum okay actually no 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 no. Okay. i'm gonna i'm gonna give you a threat sure just one yeah okay. <laughs> don't like that noise <laughs> hey, hey hey i'm gonna re-roll that zero try to oh get some momentum God. go go ah gain a momentum uh, you still have a breach to your engine system. However, you've managed to uh, actually, without having to sacrifice your phaser array, uh, you've actually managed to reroute, you've managed to repair enough of the secondary systems that your power drain isn't happening anymore. So you don't have power right now, but if you get back in the cockpit and perform the create power action, uh, it will generate, you'll be able to generate power instead of just slowly losing it. Um, and you don't, and anything to do with the engines isn't by uh, plus two. So you can actually move the ship around and stuff once you have power. Oh, uh, damage. Say again. What else do I still have to fix besides uh, sensors? Because I've given up on <laughs> weapons and communications. So my weapons aren't as effective right 
yeah, even the fire of the phasers are not like accidentally want to do hit um, or something like that. It's difficulty increased by two. What if he's not aiming? The Use GM will the be creative. Joker. Let's just say he might fire blanks. Because even this like zero tasks are increased by two. <laughs> it is a personal problem. He's in a that personal sounds craft. like a you problem. <laughs> uh, but yes, you, weapons, uh, communications are the other two systems other than sensors that are uh, damaged. All right. Um... Ah, all right, so engines, one breach, weapons, one breach, one breach, fucking sensors. I'm going to go for the communication. Let's see what I can do. Okay, difficulty three, control engineering. Um, let's spend a momentum. And let's pray that something works. I hate my luck. <laughs> uh, give me insight con difficulty one as you notice something about your surroundings. Long shot combat maneuvers focus because, you know, scanning is a good part of combat maneuvers. Or is that just behind the ship? I'll give it to you an increased complication. Never mind. Hey. You notice in the far distance movement out that way. Somewhere right. in this direction. Something's moving like left to um, left to right, uh, relative to you. Something sweeping. Well, it's not. It's like it's more like this. Like it's very slowly going like this. Fire the faces. But it's you're you're literally like eyeballing. Like you were fixing stuff. You looked up, just kind of like, oh, I ate my life, and then you happened to look up when you saw a movement. It's very tiny, whatever it is, because it's very far away. Or it happens to be tiny. I'm going to jump in the cockpit real quick and then Hold on fire my... To get back in there, fitness, call on difficulty one. Moving around in space sucks. <laughs> yeah, you get back in. So you're back into your cockpit. Um... Do I have anything, anything that will mark me as an unhostile, like a flag or something? Um, there's a transponder in the ship that, as part of the communication system, uh, it would be it would ping out Federation vessel Starfleet designation, and so and the fact that your weapons and shields are off indicate that you're non-hostile. That's a universal sign of I am not intending to fight you. Good thing these things. This can raise weapons and shields in a dime. Okay, I'm going to slowly make my way to the uh, sweeper. Mm -hmm. The sweeper. The thing moving left to right. Oh, you're trying to move the your ship over that way. Yes, sir. Um. If you want to go any faster than maneuvering thrusters, you need to generate power first. If I can... Okay. Generate power. What's the thing that you... Uh, it's daring or control plus engineering with a difficulty of two, which can succeed at cost. Cost is my engine will blow out again. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I should mark that the engine bit's been fixed, so I don't forget that for later. So... Um, I want to say onboard nav, but no. Yeah, you need something like power management. I will beat small craft to death. 
I'll give you a small craft. I'll also let you use Khan, because again, this is the engines of the ship. Alright, let's use some small craft. Let's see if I can... Ooh, hello. There you go. So you generate at least one power. So the last lap finally has one power. Um, if you want, you can spend that one momentum to generate one additional power. Uh, yeah. Okay. You're not two power. Now let's go see what this flighty boy is. Okay, so to move from where you are, uh, let's see, you'd have to move. Technically, I should mark that you're at Green Iron. That was a momentum spent for power, yes. Don't judge me. I feel like I'm going to need it. My gut tells me. No, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just mark it down. Okay, good. Okay, so you're effectively a green alert because you don't have weapons or shields on. Um, to one zone, two zone, three zone. Okay, so just determine how much energy it'll take to get there quickly before it gets away from you. Uh, page two, two, two. Okay, one second. Uh, uh, you can do one of three things uh, here you can if you man right now you're at extreme range that's why you're having a you'd have a really hard time to see it let alone sense it with the sensors um, if you want to make it if you want to get it within like eyeball range where you could actually get out of the cockpit window, you'd have to warp over there, which would cost more power than you have. Because that's one, you need one, you'd need three power to get there. Uh, but you could, uh, man, let's see, you could impulse over, which moves you into long range. Uh, so it won't be, it'll at least be closer. And one, it might be easier to censor. Or two, it might be easier for you to kind of squint your eyes and kind of look in the horizon or be within tricorder range. Let's impulse. Okay. So, base impulse check. Uh, we're going to call this control con difficulty of zero, and the ship helps you with engines con. Engines con. What was the first one? Control con? Uh, I just said it aloud. Yes. Yes. Gotcha. Yes. Oh, there you go. Generate four momentum. As you impulse over, which uses up one of your power, you're now down to one power. And they're in tricorder range now? Uh, yes. I'm going to try to tricorder them. Uh, it's going to be reason, science, difficulty. I'm going to call this three because they're quite some distance. It is a long distance scan you're doing with a tricorder. How many, how many momentum for a uh, four? Dot three. You're still with the ship. And the ship can't help me if I plug the tricorder into it, like an iPod? Uh, you probably don't want... Uh, if you do, it increases the difficulty by two. You you don't want the ship's help. Because <laughs> the sensors are fried. Oh, wait. Um, in theory, the computer could help you. I'd let you do it, because you'd be using the computers to help you, uh, but it would increase the complication by one. But you would get the ship to help as well. Because the computers I'm aren't... Gonna... I'm going for four die. Okay. Let's see what happens. Everybody say a quick prayer. Prayer. Ah, God's almighty. Um, hopefully they get a little static. I mean. Um, whatever it is, 
Um, it's about as big as you are. It's not much bigger, whatever the energy signature is. Um, it's probably something Beta Quadrant related. You're not sure if it's Starfleet or not. It's it's just so far away. It's hard to tell with the tricorder. But you do know it's some sort of small craft. Um, could be a runabout. Could be another fighter. Could be any number of things. This could be a, someone's pleasure boat, for all you know. Time to get their attention. I'm going to fire away from them. Oh, gods. But, and like, I'm going to fire in the opposite direction, but they're still going to see my signature. Uh, control uh, security difficulty of two. Because you have to get the stupid weapon system to work. Because it's damaged. It doesn't cost you any power, though. So there's that. You purposely aim this way. And then the ship helps with its weapons plus uh, security. It's actually pretty good for a shuttle. That's actually very good. It's a fiber craft. It's made to be like... Yeah. So... So... Come on, stop on clicking. Uh, combat maneuvers? Yeah, I'll give that to you. You you might use this as a way to call for uh, help during combat. When in doubt, bring out the Morse code. Yeah. All right. I gained a momentum as you fire your phaser cannons out into space. Newton's law and all. Uh, insight security difficulty one to notice something. Okay. Gain two momentum. You fire the phaser cannons and you you kind of look you look at the tricorder and you aim it over to your right, effectively. Hey, where'd it go? You kinda look up. It wasn't that far away. There's no way, whatever that was, it couldn't have interpreted the shot as anywhere near it. You didn't shoot anywhere near it, so it didn't run away. Oh, if, even, if it warped too... away, you would see a warp signature. So either that was a sensor ghost or whatever it was cloaked, and it you can't, can't see it a... on your tricorder anymore. It can't be a sensor ghost. Because I saw it with my eyeballs. <laughs> oh, Neptune. Ah, don't worry, it's myth. <laughs> I was about to say that. Uh, so what do you do? You have some time before I do something else. I don't. I have one power, so if I move again, I'm out of power. Uh, if you you can maneuver up to medium range, that's that green aura around the not the little one, but the larger one. Um, you can maneuver, and it costs you no power to do that. But if you go any further than that, it's imp that's impulsing and that or warp, and that uses up power. Can I raise heal? No, that because then if they're aggressive, I'm doing the right. You do know that as long as you raising shields in and of itself is not hostile. It's raising weapons that makes people know that you're looking for a fight. I mean, I'm a fighter. Don't they always have their weapons raised? You don't usually dump all the power into it right away. You you probably put it on just enough to fire your thing and then pull the, and then pull power away from it, so they didn't know that you were charged up, ready to start shooting. It's like, ah, uh, I have weapons, sure, but I'm not putting all my power into them. I'm gonna raise shields. Okay. So you raise your shields. You're basically at yellow alert. Boop and boop. And then we're going to cut over to somebody else in the in a similar area of space. Wait, did it actually? It's supposed to... There it is. Hey, Myth. Uh -huh. How are you doing? Focused. So, Myth, uh, you're in a uh, you're in a Romulan scout ship. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, you're in cloak at present because you're kind of entering Federation space. You're, I mean, you're not quite. Yeah. You're not quite there yet. You're trying. To, you're making. You just gotta have Romulan space. You're, what amounts to the unclaimed space between the Federation, the Romulans, and the Klingons. Mm -hmm. so i.e. Kind of... what used to be the neutral zone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, give me a uh, reason science uh, difficulty of one. How many momentum? There are uh, four does on the, the ship, table. ship help out? Oh, no, no. Does. How many momentum will I generate is the question. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh. Oh. Four. <laughs> Oh, so that's perfect. four momentum. And actually, I'll... Now the ship. <laughs> Fuck. Actually, Myth, you can... I'm going to bring the scout ship somewhere where you can see it. Uh, put it right under Salamander. All right. See? And it would assist with sense... Uh, science. <laughs> Which should be ninja mode, not sleepy mode. It's ninja mode. I only have access to the bio of the Romulan scout ship, so I can only see the image. Whoops, that's my bad. Sorry. <laughs> do to do, do. Now you should be able to do it. Yes. There you go. All right. Don't worry about the dice, the attribute part of it. That's that's for me. Answer science. Well, this is going to be something. Eh, it, it's whatever. No assist from the scout ship. Not like I really needed it. Probably. Now we're at two floating? <clears throat> One or two floating? Uh, yeah, two floating. That was um. dumb. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm still on a roll from last session. Ha, get it? Roll. Anyway. <laughs> it's funny. But um uh, you see a a ship, a small craft at extreme range, at the very edge of your sensor range. Uh, but because you made the roll, uh, you can determine that it is a scale two craft. It seems to have a blade of armor. Uh, and for and what kind of drew your attention is that you saw it fire phasers. Um, not anywhere near you. It just kind of fired it in a direction. Well, uh, time to start asking questions. Yep. Uh, what's the frequency of those phasers? Uh, it follows Starfleet issue. All right. Uh, implies a cannon of some kind rather than a ray or a bank. So. All right. So that means I can deduce this is probably a combat vehicle, but it's scale two. Cool. Yep. And it's Starfleet phasers probably all right so i'm going to fly over to investigate okay uh uh how fast are you going you're gonna warp over you're gonna just maneuver over impulse i'm just gonna move over at a one quarter impulse i think based off that distance uh actually th this is like at starship scale so you're actually to, they're at. Uh, if you were to warp to them, it'd be mm -hmm. this is close. This is medium. Long. Extreme one. Extreme two. Extreme three. Extreme four. So four. Five. Six. Seven. Warp to get all the way over there because <laughs> they're at ex at the very edge of your center range. All right. You get there. Um... You get all the, the way there in one go. In one warp jump. I'm going to warp to medium range. You can maneuver to medium range. Maneuver medium range is that second round you. I was meaning medium range to the target. Oh, uh so one two six. Yeah, that that's a, that's how much it would take to get there. Because right. their, their medium range is there. Mm -hmm. That's what I would like to do. Uh, 
Okay. How much power did I say? Six? Six. So you're down, All right. down to three power. Mm-hmm. As you warp over. And now that I'm closer. Whoops. Doop. Doop. Um, sensors easily pick up a what appears to be a uh, the computer doesn't know what this ship is. It registers as Starfleet uh, Scale 2 uh, Unknown Fighter Craft. It's all it says hmm. in the database because it doesn't know what it's looking at. You'd actually have to do a roll to figure it out for yourself. I'm going to do that. Uh, it's going to be Reason Con uh, difficulty of 2. All right. And the ship well, is, is you know. does help with computers plus con. Well, at least you get... Um... At least you get an automatic success. Yeah. And also my con's three, so... Oh, wow. Good thing you have that automatic success. Yeah, that's one. But it was difficulty two, so... Uh, The uh... ship does help. Oh, the ship does help. Computer's con. Has to get at least one for it to be of any good to you. Yeah. It says last laugh on the side. (laughs) <laughs> it's been in the hangar bay for the past couple months. Oh, Myth isn't looking out the window. Yeah. Come on, Myth. Hey! The... That's two. It takes a bit of figuring because the Raman computers, it, it's giving Raman a name, so you, you have to take an extra step of that means this, that means that. Wow, what is this thing? Until eventually it's, oh, that's the last laugh. It's the P 14 experimental fighter. That's right. why the Raman ship doesn't know what the heck this is. Mm-hmm. Um, so I drop cloak. Uh, here, here's the hilarious part. You drop cloak. And two other ships drop cloak as, hey, Joker, you're surrounded by three wrong <laughs> ships at medium range to you. I think we're in combat now. <laughs> I think Joker's right. just cropped his pants. <laughs> these are effectively, right. to give you an idea, these are all scale to... These are like, it's like fighting ships your size. Mm-hmm. I'm going right. to try to raise someone on the tricorder again. <laughs> uh, so... Okay, so there's two other Romulan scout ships here. Myth, are these your friends? That wasn't in character. I'm just yeah. Asking. Nope, these are probably after me. Uh, well, uh, you guys get to go first. I imagine you guys are going to respond in some defensive manner to deal with the ships that have popped into existence with shields and weapons on. Right. Um... So what I'd like to do, honestly, is uh, check with the GM and see if this ship has a transporter. It does. Don't transport me off my ship. Don't you do it. You can tell that the fighter has its shields up. All right, the fighter has its shields up. Never mind then. <laughs> Angry Joker in the corner. I'll, I'll note that your shields aren't up yet. Yeah, uh, that's why I was thinking about doing that. Uh, so what's the operational state of that fighter? Of Joker's fighter? It can fight. It can't do much else. All right. Ooh, the music started to play. <laughs> All right, then I'm raising shields. Shield because... raising. Yeah. So hey, two ships raised shield. Uh, Joker, from your perspective, two ships decloaked. Shields and weapons on. Then the third one, declo- it decloaked first, but for some reason its shields or weapons weren't on, and its shields just popped on. It's a weird desync, but whatever. <laughs> Maybe that one's slower at this than the others. Who knows? Um, weird flex, but okay. Yes. <laughs> uh, that was a minor action to raise your shields. You still have your regular action. All right. Um... I'd like to first off, let's see, what's the shields on this thing? Oh, that's a decent amount of shields. Huh. 
All right. First off, spend momentum for another uh, minor action. Okay. Down to five. And I'd like to use that minor action to um, key in my RF uh, like transponder signal to be different from the other two. Yeah, that'd be great. If I... <laughs> Unfortunately, Joker, uh, this amounts to insight uh, con difficulty of two because your sensors aren't are actually giving are, might not give you the right answer on the plus side your ship will help you with this roll maybe take a momentum mm -hmm. yeah let's, i like the idea of ship. if he fails oh this ship is now flipping me the bird <laughs> <laughs> why would you I'm change gonna, your I'm rf signal it. specifically to do that you're next or you're first <laughs> Oh no. Everyone take a breath and say a prayer. Prayer. It's a very religious uh, stream today. Oh, now you make the darn rolls. <laughs> and we get that momentum back. It's almost like the game wills it to be like a Star Trek episode. Yeah. You reckon it takes a bit because your, your sensors are garbled, but you recognize a Starfleet uh, RF signal. That whoever that is is a better is a Starfleet vessel. Romans could try to fake it, but no, the other two aren't bothering with it. So either this is a really uh, uh, intricate deception, or that other ship's trying to. Because that ship has now you now know from just combat maneuvers and pilot protocol. Uh, if those two aren't in on it, it's going to get shot at. Because it isn't broadcasting the correct ROM. Because these two are broadcasting the same uh, friend or foe signal. Mm -hmm. Or this one just changed it to match yours, effectively. Yeah. Actually, then... point of fact, it's uh, it's identifying itself as a... And you actually know the code because you're from the ship. It's identifying itself as a, uh, a kismet vessel. Which only you or anyone in the 10th would know. Jesus Christ, Grunin, what have you done now? <laughs> God damn it. Uh, that was All your right. second minor there, Myth. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, That's three power. I don't like that. But Keep also... Mind, when you do a power uh, gain action, you can go above your starting max. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm going to do a power restore action. Okay, uh, that is control engineering, I believe. Uh, sorry, daring or control engineering. Difficulty two. Mm -hmm. Focus in xenotechnology. Yes. All right. Um, spending one for an extra die. and uh using my augmented control grr <laughs> what about your augmented daring jeez so four successes oh my god generate two momentum you've generated a one power uh for each extra momentum you spend you gain an additional one power all right i da, da, da. i'm going to spend three momentum so is at four so seven power now yay okay then i guess that's all i can do because that was two minor actions and an action so uh do you wish to uh swift task and do another action and increase difficulty, or do you? Does your side wish to keep the initiative and have Joker do something before they do? Hey, Joker, do you, you want to do anything? Sorry, Evas uh... evasive maneuver. Thanks, Brennan. I'm a fighter pilot. I wouldn't know to do evasive maneuver. <laughs> <laughs> All 
Yeah, evasive maneuver. Okay, so you do want to go, so I'll take that. Uses up two momentum to keep the initiative. Uh, you won't... Uh, eh, we don't have to worry about it. There's so few of us. Uh, bah, bah, bah. So it is your turn. Um, with your, uh, your main task role is evasive maneuver. Presumably... Control con, difficult. Uh, sorry, uh, incorrect. Daring con, difficulty of uh, one because you fixed the engines. Um, system, oh, funny enough, it wouldn't be an engine thing. It's a it's a system by ship's structure con, so it wouldn't have mattered anyway. Weird. Oh Weird. shit! It is daring con. It's been a while. <laughs> Whoops! Come on, ship. What no. the hell? Hmm. Uh, thankfully, well, it's dip one, so. Yeah. Uh, and actually, because you have impulsive, improved impulse drive, uh, you may spend two momentum to increase difficulty of the attack by one until the start of your next turn. Uh, that would, uh, to do that, it would cost one momentum and give me one threat. But at base right now, evasive action has worked. Uh, this has used one power. And diff to hit you has been increased by one. I'd, I'd, go, I'd go for it and get another. Yeah, what's he going to do with 18 threat? Yeah, let's do it. Let's figure it out. Okay, so boop, boop, boop. This is revenge for me missing like three weeks worth of the game. <laughs> well, everyone, everyone had everyone had a life or death situation put on them. Myth was the last was last session. I did everyone else the session before. Although, Yours has just been on the back burner this last while. Although, um, hang on, what was it? Uh, doesn't evasive maneuvers move you one range as well? Ooh, it might. Uh, I think so. In which case, I'd get yourself. It does, a little it does bit not. Further. It does not. I, I thought it did. No, we just used to do that because it kind of made sense you know, that you're moving whilst evading. Yeah. But it's a. Uh, in the abstract scale of this, like, uh, if we zoomed in, we'd probably see his fighter tumble, juking and jiving as it's being shot at, but it's not really progressing in any one direction. Mm hmm. Height. Uh, so you're harder to hit because that's annoying. By two whole degrees. Yeah. Uh, this ship for its turn will move into medium. Oh, move into close range. And so will this ship. Uh, their turn is done. Uh, they acted last, so you guys get to act. All right. I so... think Joker probably wants to move first. Uh, although you don't have any power left, do you? He's at zero right now. They use oh. up on power to evade. Hmm. He's not dead in space, but he can't do anything that requires power. But my, I have independent power for my phasers. phasers. Yes. <laughs> so he could just. So you can and start shoot. shoot. <laughs> <laughs> might want to do that. You might want to do that. Yeah. Keep in mind that the evasive action will go away the minute he acts. Hmm. Because it lasts until he acts again. Right. Right, then actually it's better if I move first. Yeah. All right. So Wait. I'll move into... Before you act, mm -hmm. can I try to use the tricorder? Use the... If you act at all, your your oh, evasive stops. Not even a minor? Not even a minor. The minute your turn starts, uh, your evasive stops. Because you're not busy making the ship dodge and weave. Can I skip my turn? Well, I mean, well, we we should have Myth go first. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're right, you're right. So, um, uh, yeah. Actually, uh, if mm -hmm. you were, sorry, I just wanted to clarify. The only way you could have done that, Joker, now that I think about it, if you had done evade and then before they moved, you'd have to have given me two threat to swift task and act again to do a secondary thing. And I don't think you wanted, you wanted to do that. No. Okay. Not not for a tricorder thing. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead, Myth. Uh, so what would it cost to move here? Uh, being your range, it's a maneuver. Costs you nothing. All right, maneuver here then. 
Okay, it does. Oh, sorry, it does take a task. It just doesn't cost any. Uh, does it, there's no roll for it? You just get there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I need to get into range at least because I wasn't really gonna do anything at long range. Yeah. So you move into close range with yellow target. You're at medium mm -hmm. range with the green target, and close range with the fighter. So you can actually see each other more or less because you're close enough that you can actually eyeball each other from not like. You're not nose to nose, but you can like look out your window and see the other thing flying around. Mm -hmm. um, do you wish to swift task and do something else, or minor action and activate or deactivate something? What could I minor action? Hmm. Uh, minor actions. Like turning on your weapons, for example. Oh, yeah, that's probably a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna raise weapons. Okay. A moment. Uh, Joker, you can tell that the other ship has uh, powered on its disruptor cannons. It is now a threat to all ships within its range. Don't try nothing funny. Uh, do you wish to swift task and do something and increase difficulty, which will give me two threat, or are you going to let the turn pass to them? Hmm, what do you think I should do, people? I think you should give me threat. Hi, you. I say be bold. I say you override your warp drive and nuke and <laughs> I think I think I'll go for a mix of those and um, swift task to... Uh fire on yellow okay that gives me two threats uh difficulty Actually, hit their weapons are online yes yes all right yeah i'll fire them uh you're just hitting whatever you can with the cannons yeah i'm not aiming at anything okay uh it's a difficulty three task normally two but it's up by one because swift task uh -huh. all right that's security um, 20 threat. That's a lot. Yes, it is. Oh, I don't like that at oh, all. Oh, this is going to be bad. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, let's see how this goes. Not buying an extra die at that cost. Hey. Hey, three. <laughs> let's see if the ship helps. Uh, ship roll. Ship helps. We nice. generate a momentum. You generate two because uh, your augmented control. No, that's three to get the base success because it was increased difficulty. Oh. Wait, why was it increased difficulty? Swift, Swift task. task. Ah. You fire your disruptors and you make contact. Roll damage, please. Hmm. Disruptor cannons. Well... That's four. Re -roll. That's four. You're doing at least two damage due to the resistance. Hmm. Well, that draws their attention. Yeah. I feel um, like I should leave that momentum on the table. Yeah. Yeah. Gonna do that. That's me. Well, you got their attention, all right? Yellow, Romulan, green. Two of what you pieces of junk have? <laughs> oh, you did damage to their shields at least. Yeah, Which, uh, yeah, you got its attention, all right. So it turns and opens fire back at you. Uh huh. Because this other ship's looking really hard. It's juking around a lot. It's really hard to hit. But you, you just came right at it. Yeah. Oh, guess who has all the shields? Guess who's probably not going to have shields? <laughs> There's 20 threat. Yeah. It's a lot of threat. It's a lot of threat. And we have one momentum. Oh my god. Is it not enough for a bulk cube? <laughs> yep. Oh my god. It fires and misses. Hey! 
Right. What is he saving all this threat for? Yeah. Like, I'm waiting for the other shoe Romulan to drop. Romulan Robert decloaks. Joker, it goes to you. Uh, the Federation ship fired at the other two. Uh, well, the Romulan Federation ship, whatever, uh, opened fire at the guys who were up after you. So, uh, your turn. Better help him. Um, yeah. I still have damage to my fucking... <clears throat> I'm going to try to raise weapons. Okay, it's a minor action, so you are now a... Well, you don't need to, though, because independent phasers, right? It's still a minor to turn them on. He didn't have them on ah. this whole time. Oh, okay. I, I was trying to be as diplomatic as possible. He's trying to be now... non-threatening. <laughs> now you've awoken the beast of Everest. Uh -huh. So you're coming about to shoot? Oh, yeah. They're dancing. I want to dance with green. You dance with green. Okay. Uh, difficulty of two. Because you you're not yeah you're not doubling up. Uh, oh wait 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 wait. Weapons are damaged, aren't they? Still, you didn't fix those. Difficulty Don't. of four. Don't Ooh. tell me that. Don't tell me. That. Maybe spend a momentum. Um, actually, my shields are still up, and I uh, I'm pretty good on shields. Can I try to fix my weapons real quick from the inside? Uh, sure. Uh, it's who? Um. Yes. Uh, you can do. You can attempt a daring. Uh, engineering difficulty three comp two because you're kind of doing this in the middle of a firefight. Uh, do, do you care if I use that momentum? I do. No, I was, I was saving it yeah. for you, so. Okay. And, uh. Small craft? I'll knock give it on to you. Hold? Yay! That means nothing! <laughs> um, uh, is there a way to do anything with that zero or no? I don't think so. Wait, it was difficulty three? Yeah. Oh, wow. Unless yeah. you got some sort of determination thing you can do. Oh, oh, milestone right. determination. Uh, I'm willing to accept a success at cost, but you lose the benefits of improved pulse drive as you draw emergency reserves from the drive to help. Oh, the you could you, you could use um your value of ready to go. He needs determination to spend for it. Oh, did he already spend it? Yeah. Yes. Oh, I must have missed that. Yeah, you are off doing something. Come on, Grunin. Uh, you know what? You know why? I'm probably not going to use a base of action again. Yeah, I'm going to draw. I'm going to draw. I'm going to draw from my impulse drive. Uh, Myth, you can visibly see uh, sparks coming off of the back of the... and along the body of the fighter. It hasn't been hit yet. It's just for something's going on over there. You're not entirely sure what. <laughs> but most mm. fighters don't. That's usually not a healthy thing for something like that to have damaged. Uh, green, noticing that you stop. Actually, sorry, I take that back. Uh, Joker, you can for two. I don't know if you want to take the shot, but you could swift task for two threat and try to shoot him. It'd be difficulty, uh, it'd be um, control, security, difficulty of three. Yeah, I wouldn't. He already has 20 threat. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it goes to him. No, I, Joker's going to flip off the green bird now that he has his weapons back online and just smile Okay. Uh, it's going to try to shoot you. Okay. Your, your weapons are on, and, well, they were, they were going to do something anyway, but now they really want to shoot you. Uh, huh. That's a hit. Going to burn two threat to make that go away. Ooh. One, two, three, four, five, six damage. 
Uh, well, no, because ablative of armor. armor and yeah, ablative armor and skill too. So that's uh, it's two, two damage. You can just let your shield soak that. You've lost some of your shields when the disruptor cannons hit you, but you're okay. You're okay. Turn order gets back to you too because they acted last. Up to you guys who wants to act. I'm pissed. If you want to go, you can go, but if not, I'm blasting. I think something. you should probably go again first. And then I'll follow you up. I mean, it might be best to try and focus one target. Yeah, I'd agree on that. Alright, who do we want to focus on? We're both in range for yellow. Yeah, but green made me angry. <laughs> and actually, uh, for both of you, uh, I'll let you actually roll insight security difficulty one to realize something. I'll call it two, actually. There's a warbird behind you. Uh, Don't need that. Joke that. Sorry, at least four of them. Don't worry about it. Nothing's wrong. Nothing weird is happening in this battle. Alright. Something weird is happening in this battle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, what the succeed at cost, I'll say, is that you do get the feeling that something's wrong about this fight, but you can't think of what exactly it is. Mm -hmm. They're not doing something that they normally do. Uh, but who is Jack first, Smith or Joker? Is combat a uh, minor action? Yeah. Uh, this is Warrant Officer Christoph Makarov. Please identify. Who are you coming to? The guy who's shooting at my ally. <laughs> uh, Myth will have to wait till they're minor to respond back. But you send out the message on your combat. You get the feeling it's going to take time for whoever to respond. You know, I just, I just realized something. The talent of improved impulse is actually really useless. Says you. <laughs> but because it costs two momentum to create uh, a complication anyway. So back to the combat. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll have a we'll have a kibitz about that later. <laughs> um, uh, Joker, what did you wish to do with your main action? I'm firing at yellow because oh, wingman. Uh, difficulty two. What's the roll again? I haven't done space combat in the control security, assisted by your ship's weapon security. Actually, does someone else want to handle the last laugh stats? I, I've been rolling. I've got any. I don't have to roll it. I can roll it. Go for it. Uh, weapon security. Yeah. Please. 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 Hold on. Holding. Come. Hold Stay on target. Stay on target. Nah. Well, it's because Tib did it. Um, <laughs> I don't know why that happened. That was weird. Uh, you open fire and miss. Nah. I'm a bit rusty, aren't I? <laughs> oh, a little bit rusty. Well, their turn. Uh... This is Federation space, yes? Uh, it's unclaimed space. All right. Well, it would have been neutral zone, but you're all supposed to be allies, so you shouldn't need a neutral zone anymore. <laughs> I yeah, don't we really do. Know, I don't even know where we are, so.
Green ship begins to go on an attack run. Wait a second, doesn't that go away like immediately on his next turn? Yeah, if he unless he swift tasks and attacks immediately. Uh uh. Uh-huh. Oh. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, oh. Uh, Actually, is that even worth it for him to do? Because he's by himself. Come to think of it. No, please spend your threat. <laughs> um. I think you should swift task. Oh, I know what it's going to do. It begins oh, no. scanning you. Oh, no. For weaknesses. Fuck you. Oh, oh. Fuck you. <laughs> oh. Hmm. Spending what threat for an extra die? I no longer have this breach to my weapons, right? Oh. The breach is still there. You're just not considered... Oh. Because to fix breaches, you need to be in a, in a Stardock. Yeah. And it doesn't even... It can't even... Uh, the ship can't even assist, because... Yeah. They got uh, no, no success. successes. He attempted to uh, get a sensor lock on you, but couldn't get it to go on. But um, this ship is just so different. It's almost like it doesn't have any weaknesses. Oh. Uh, that was Green's go. Uh, Myth, go ahead. Pew pew. Um, I guess pew pew, yeah. I guess pew pew, okay. <laughs> I guess. I mean... I didn't notice anything was wrong. Are there any good minor actions I can take? You can respond to Chris. It's true. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> um, you hear the response. Come back. Um, and it's Myth, but she doesn't identify herself. Says, um, this is Romulan Scout Vessel, and reads off the Romulan Scout Vessel. Please be advised, we are friendly. <laughs> uh, Joker, give me Insight Con Difficulty 1 to recognize the voice of myth over the comms. It's only Diff 1 because, you know, you've heard this voice before. Multiple times. <laughs> <laughs> Game of Momentum? Uh, yeah, that's Myth's voice, all right. It's kind of hard to miss it. Hey, we finally have a momentum again. The Roman hey. Scout Ship Merit. Blow my good myth. Control security not... difficulty two to hit yellow. Yeah. Xenotech focus. Eh? Uh, at increased difficulty. Uh, difficulty. Complication. Alright. That's what you get. And then... <laughs> I'm not gonna buy an extra die right here. So I'll just roll. Ooh. Alright. For so God's that's sake. Two successes. So, so you hit, are you going to let that complication stand? Uh, wait, also roll the um, scout ship. Yeah, got to roll scout ship. Yep. Weapon security. Yep. Security already had that take down. Sorry, no. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> My God. Wow. I, I guess we should let those stand. I'll gain two threat with one of them. Unless, wait, uh, does Myth have any medals or anything for quashing? Did I get anything like that? I don't think so. Um, let's see. Now I have Medal of Excellence and Starcross. Wait, isn't the Starcross the one that lets you ignore one? That increases your focus range. No. Damn it. Then no. I, um, uh, my uh, counselor has the same one. Hmm. 
So two threat from one of them, and the other one, uh, you accidentally activate a security protocol, and for a brief second, the ship mistakes you for the for an unauthorized user. Hmm. It does no damage to you. <laughs> but I'll spend one threat so it rerolls those two damage, because no, do at least one damage, you silly thing. <laughs> you piece of junk. <laughs> it, it, it jolts you, but you're an android, oh, so... It, it wouldn't have mattered anyway, I have resistance. You could have spent to get through it. So it has to do at least one damage for me to cut through it. That was great. Alright. So you hit the darn thing. Roll the damage. Uh, Good grief. Damage. <laughs> the way you just said, you piece of junk. <laughs> Alright, so that's... Hmm. I think I might want to spend to re-roll that. Yeah. One momentum right. to re-roll fails? Okay. Mm -hmm. Rolling three. Uh, that's... Alright, that's... That's five. Five. Minus six, that's two, three. that's three. Yeah. Yeah, well. Mm. It's bringing down a shield some, but it's not taking any breaches. Uh, yellow ship is going to repair its shields. Because it's going to shot at. Uh, I need to keep track of the power usage because they have... Oh yeah, I need to keep track of power too. Um, Alright, that sucks. Count. The so power on the sheet is your power, by the way. Uh, I'm keeping track separately, so you don't use it. So they should be at this number. So you were at that. We're at that. You both should be down to this. Never thought I'd be using my D20s for anything useful. <laughs> ah. Okay, so fixing your shields brings it down. Um, you prompt to spin down counter. Stiff one, so don't sweat. Just roll. Bang. There you go. Yeah. And the well, here's the well, here's an opportunity to spend some threat. <laughs> it gains back eighteen shields. <laughs> <laughs> I gained back. With two threats spend later, its shields are 100% once again. Hmm. Okay. And now, here's where you find out what was going wrong. Um, mm. NPC ships go, have a number of turns equal to their scale. These are scale two craft. Well, they've been doing stuff in the background, haven't they? Yep. Like getting some of their power back, because cloaking takes power to do. <laughs> uh. So they have to use up one of their turns, just getting their power back up to normal. Uh, yeah, this ship, yellow ship, is going to try to be evasive. And it does. It does that. Gah. Evasive. Green ship is going to do the same. Ooh. Through two thread away, but it gains one back anyway. As they're now both taking evasive action. As now that they're doing it, it occurs to you that these are scale two craft and they are usually crewed by at least two people on each ship. Mm -hmm. I was I was wondering about that. Yeah, me too. That's part <laughs> of why I wanted to beam Joker over so we could have two people on one shift. <laughs> uh, turn goes back to you because they did act last. And evasive actually costs power, so I have to remember. So, Joker, your engines are down, attack. yeah? Do not attack. 
It will not cause miners to communicate anymore because made contact now. All right. I'm saying do not attack them because as long as they don't make a move, they stay in the base. We can use this time to uh, regroup. Yeah. Um, so, what's the status of your engines? One second. Uh, my engines. On fire. Not on fire. One breach, but I got them back kind of up and running. But on a scale one, on a scale two ship, that's bad. He takes another. If he takes another one, his engines will be the same. Right. Um, I recommend you restore power, and then I'll feed you sensor data, and we can try and warp out of here. That sounds good to me. Oh, uh, what's the power for? Or the roll for power again? Uh, it Draw is. Engineering, I think. Daring or control engineering, difficulty two. Because you're a flight controller, you could use con instead of engineering. Using con, let's try this shit. Uh, what was our consensus on small craft? Uh, yes, in this case. Sick. All right, everybody say a prayer. 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 God I damn it. hate my life. Star Trek isn't a religious thing usually, so <laughs> it's more Babylon Five. But... Well, no, the Pajorans. It's true. Uh, the Jim Hadar, and the Vorta, they're religious. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah there you go. Religion. What? Who's messing <laughs> with my sheet? Oh, I'm sorry. That's me. I'm looking through your sheet real quick. I have nothing. Okay, <laughs> I have nothing. Yellow, yeah. go, yellow goes, and it maneuvers over here. Maneuver. Okay. And it will swift task, shoot at green. Uh, shoot at you, sorry. Shoot at green, go ahead, do that. Uh, difficulty is up by one because you're wanting it, you're outside of its close range. Mm -hmm. uh, it will spend one threat to buy a die. It hits. Oh uh, wait, wait, hang on. But hang on. Wouldn't that be wouldn't that be an increase of difficulty by two because it's at increased range and swift task? Oh, you're right. It would need extra. It would actually need a target of four. Yep. It actually misses. You're right. Woohoo. Thank you, Granon. <laughs> I'll move you over here because you're not literally in its way. Yeah. Move you over here. So. Uh, yellow has acted. It goes to Joker. Wait, who acted? Uh, Myth did because Myth shot. Right. Right. Okay. No, Makarov did because he tried to get power. So it's actually Myth's. My bad. Got it. Yeah, I was like, wait. Uh, 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 got it. <laughs> um. Tether the beam. Pull me out. I don't think I have a tractor beam. You don't. Yeah. You have a physical tether, don't you? Prop made. Mm, I don't uh, think I have you, a grappling. You you can make an emergency attachment. It's a daring control difficulty three maneuver. If you mess up, a you daring have control. Landing. Sorry, daring con, uh, but if you uh, difficulty three, assisted by engines con, if you mess it up, you accidentally ram him. Can't you oh, just, yeah, uh, I would not do that. Can yeah. you just fire a harpoon at him? Uh, not equipped with that. That's a grappling hook. I'm not the NXO1. Yeah, I was going to say, that's like an actual talent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Please just ram them at first. Is there any way I can help joker recover power you can spend a turn to assist and basically the next time he rolls uh you can roll to assist him at that time because basically you're talking him through how to do it over the comms i'm gonna do that okay so you spend a turn just talking joker through what he needs to do the next time he restores power mm -hmm. go 
green breaks its face maneuver. Maneuvers. And it is going to fire at the fighter. Uh, swift task again, I assume? Yep, buying two dice this time, because the difficulty is higher than they thought. Because <laughs> You see why I was saving up the threat. <laughs> there we yeah. Go. <laughs> Um, yep, oh, it hits. Yeah, that hits. Ugh. That's eight. That's eight. Minus, minus four. four. Minus okay. Four. Plus one. Yeah, that's five. Okay. So Take that's five. a breach. It's a breach. Where is it gonna breach? Structure. Cool. Oh, right. no. Literally a oh. If I roll an effect, uh, Joker's gonna get lethally injured. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you just uh, killed Joker. <laughs> if you wish to avoid the injury, it will cost two threat. Do it. Just, just, just do that. I've wasted too much time making a backstory for him. I'm doing. <laughs> That's your one for the scene. The only the, the next time you get an injury, uh, yeah, you'll have to use determination. Uh, to survive it, so Which you don't have. So, yeah. so, um, I think it might be worth abandoning the fighter. Uh, as a note for structure damage, um, oh, the for an impact just causes possible injury. So, for now, you just have a breach to your structure. As the, the window next, the disruptor hits the cockpit wall next to you, the glass, the, the uh, duroplastic sh glass shatters, and there's alarms inside your helmet, and immediately you start grabbing, uh, checking all your seams and start patching up everything on you to make sure you're not sucking vacuum for the next few seconds, because yeah, your uh, your, cock your uh, cabin's been compromised, so you're living off of Eva power now, but hey, you're not dead. Oh my god. This is so stressful. Yes, I know. <laughs> myth, myth, contact Joker now. Oh, oh no. Oh no, 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 no. I did five damage, didn't I? You only have you only had three shields left. There's another breach coming your way. Oh no! Oh, fuck! 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 Okay. Your... Uh oh. Okay. Uh, your weapons, I think, just got destroyed. Ugh. Well, uh, not destroyed. Right, sorry. sorry on a fan. Uh, disabled. Uh, yeah. Weapon system cannot be used to perform or or assist any tasks. Yeah, I will. Right. I don't think you were planning on doing that anyway. I think Difficulty to repair would be like four or an extended task. So your mm -hmm. weapons are gone now. Also, your shields are down. Mr. Makarov, I suggest you scuttle your ship. At this point in time. Unfortunately, they get to go. No, don't you do that. Don't you do that to me. The ship moves. Drops shields. I'm calling the police. Is attempting to beam you off the ship. All right, bring me, of bring me into your ship, motherfucker. Five. Bring me into your ship. I've got a knife and I've got a sword. <laughs> Actually, it's a difficulty five. They better wait till combat's done. No, 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 no. Bring me over now. Yeah, we'll just move over and take, sh and uh, we'll have yellow shoot at blue instead. That makes more sense. Because they can't beam can you over it with difficulty five. Can I throw my knife? <laughs> just throw you your knife at the ship. Difficulty of 20. If you can do it, <laughs> I'll let you hit him with a knife. <laughs> Unfortunately, the ship has resistance, so. <laughs> I don't think you know how much kn knives do, man. <laughs> you hit with the knife, it does like 20 damage. Automatically, I yeah. don't even need to roll. Actually, this one's gonna stay. Yellow's gonna stay where it is, and it's gonna shoot at Myth. Buying two dice because it has to do four. Well, hmm. I mean, hmm. I didn't want to hit. See, I don't know if it makes that. <laughs> Oh, 
Rerolling fails. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's that's five damage with resistance. And seven does not take away your does not zero out your shields. Uh, no, it's five damage because I have resistance too. Oh, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Reach yeah. your weapons. All right. Uh, your weapons are impacted. Do you use up a minor action to restore? Uh, you can't shoot. Uh, their turns are over. New round. They ended last. Goes to you two. All right. So I think we should abandon the fighter and both get on the Romulan scout ship. Thoughts? I don't wanna, but I got. Yeah. All right. So. Wait, before you beam me over, I'm gonna grab something from the ship. Mm-hmm. It's it's just sentimental, more for the you know drama. Mm-hmm. It's the dog. It's the dog tags of all the fighters that. He fought with and fell with them. It's a collection of his comrades' dog tags. Nice. Uh, so Mitt's going to attempt to beam Joker over. Yeah. Cool. Minor action to bring your shields down. Mm-hmm. Your task roll of beaming somebody. Here we go. It is control engineering diff. Base diff is two. You're not in an transport room so three he's not in a pad four oh it stops because you're being into the pad that's in this thing never mind yep oh we should scuttle it first yeah i thought you did that yeah I'm, he'd have I to spend a task it. roll uh oh, which you could mm, mm. you could here's the theory you could do uh you could attempt a scuttle roll for joker um it, actually, it's not even a roll because you just tell the ship to destroy itself after X amount of time. Um, and then you spend two threat and you keep the initiative and then myth can go. Hmm. I mean, it's got codes to the Kismet, the Arbor, yeah, no, and we, the Ever. We do need to destroy it. I was just hoping we could swift task after we beam to our boat as well. But you could send a command to it remotely, yeah. That's another option. It's just that one's going to be a roll, is all. Right, it's just if we swift task mm, now it would increase the difficulty of the beaming, wouldn't it? Yeah, uh, if he set it to scuttle itself? Yeah, before I beat him off. I mean, it, it does now. <laughs> um, it's yeah, a, I'm just going to beat him off right now. Okay. <laughs> Assisted by sh- uh, the uh, your ship's um, sensors engineering. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm buying a third die with one threat. Okay. Control engineering, not security. That's four. So, Joker is now on board the scout ship. And rolling the scout ship okay, to see sorry. if I... My mistake. Ah. Right. <laughs> Generates one momentum. One momentum generated. Welcome on board, Mr. Makarov. He's not going to (laughs) talk. He's not in a great mood. You actually see bits of of, of Duraplex glass kind of embedded into the flight suit when you get, when you beam support. Can you detonate your ship remotely? 
He's just gonna solemnly nod, look at the dog tags, and then look out at the ship. I suggest you do so. Alright, let's do this. Uh, for Makarov to act before they do, it'll cost one momentum and one threat. You wanna? Yeah. Um... So, before we spend that... Oh. Looking over the specifics... Mm -hmm. You know what actually might be worth more? <laughs> Makarov raise shields. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, it, yeah. Well, you can do that as a, as, as a miner. Yeah. Miner raise shields first and then do it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Because it's a different character. <laughs> and that's the stipulation of shield. Is my universal translator good after the uh, thing? Because I will take a no. Hmm? For drama. Uh, sure. Oh, wait. If mine's messed up... She can still understand me, right? Yeah. Yeah. Never mind. You can't understand her. <laughs> oh. So, yeah, I'm going to raise the shield. And then... Oh. Set it to low. If that's within the realm of possible. Oh, it is. You use attack act, uh, your ta your main task roll to tell the ship to blow up. And for two With threats. a timer, I assume? Oh, he tried to set a timer. Uh-huh. But the ship is so damaged that it just blows up. Uh, see, this is what I was afraid of. <laughs> roll them explosion dice. I haven't rolled the damn thing yet. How many threats did you spend for that? Two. Two. Fair. For creating a complication. All uh, right. It um, is. Uh, when something blows up like this, would it be equivalent to like ramming? No. Uh, there's rule. Uh, yeah. There's Recon. rules for explosions. And they're not fun. Five challenge dice with piercing two. Ugh. And I'll spend two more so it doesn't hurt just stuff in close range. Actually, you guys aren't in close range. Yeah, so never mind. I don't want to have to do that. Take no, you should back. spend two to make no, sure no, no. it affects things in medium range as well. Yeah. No, no. Yeah, come, on. <laughs> come on. Come on. Come on. Don't be like that. Does someone want to roll the five challenge dice for the last dive, the last lap, or yeah, sure, because I, I, I will. It. Wait, wait, wait. Let me. Yeah, go. No, let, let Joker do it. Yeah. Also, fuck you for the music. <laughs> That's five challenge dice. Mm -hmm. Uh, yep, because it's three plus the scale of the vehicle. So bigger things blow up bigger. <laughs> he said, pointing out the obvious. Yeah. <laughs> Really? One, wow. two, three. Oh. All right. Two damage with piercing two. So we take two damage. Our shields are still up. Cloak. Is there any way to get one more action in before they act? Uh, Makarov could try to swift task and act again. Uh, decreased difficulty of one, whatever it is he's doing. Can I swift task? No, because it's his turn at the All moment. Right. Get out of the cons. Well, there's a co pilot seat. It's meant for two people. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. 
I'm gonna get us out of here. Joker said solemnly, watching as the grin from the last laugh floats by. Warping away. Very good. I assume. Con. Yeah. Uh, it is Control Con. Difficulty of one, because it is a Romulan ship. Assisted by Engines Con. Hit the base one. See if you get any momentum. You do. How much power are you using to warp away? How much power? Um, we have six. Yeah, How you would have much... spent one to beam him over. We have five. <laughs> How much would it take to get back to uh to escape combat, uh, you have to guess how much they have because you spend a certain number and they have to have enough power equal to what you spent plus one to keep to mm -hmm. catch you. If they, have, if they spend, if they don't have enough, they can't catch up to you anymore. Right. I, they be can... I believe they have as, like, as much or more than all. Right. I think we spend four so that we're not at zero power because that's bad. And then... If need be, I can spend. I can do power restoring. I was going to say we put our stress, uh, distress in. Control. You know, I didn't think that this would affect me as much, like in real life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, losing ships is. That ship has been with me since the Everest. Oh. That was... That's a loss of a family right there. Mm -hmm. So how much power? Four. Four? Dude, if I will kill every one of you. I will beam onto each ship. As they both start calculating their power, I'll read aloud for the benefit of players how much power each ship has each ship has four power left they need five <laughs> to catch you <laughs> you've evaded the uh scouts <clears throat> all right that's why the power is super important for me to track <laughs> yeah <laughs> power tracking is very important you were never trying to kill joker you were going for his ship they wanted to capture the dang thing. It was a weird ship. They wanted it. Yeah. Trying to kill his spirit. <laughs> no, I'm saying you. Oh, me? Oh, I was trying to kill you or the ship, really. This was your life or death situation. If Myth didn't succeed in theirs, you would have been on your own this one. So imagine how bad that would have gone. Yeah. <laughs> the ship. <laughs> Who do I feel like you've, you've done more damage by killing the ship kudos to me do i get to get, tell the other gms i have a kill is that really one, fair one second i'm adding the notes in my fucking <laughs> because there is these are romulans right uh yep. those are romulan ships yeah oh great romulans have not been added to his shit list <laughs> do we need to add an in memoriam um how do i can I not edit my sheet with the notes? You should be able to. Hold yeah, on. Yeah, you should. Oh, never mind. Here oh, we you go. have to click, click oh. cog first. Yeah. Oh wait. So, oh can't, man. Can't. Yeah, he he already he already had Orions as like enemies. Mm -hmm. Now now we're adding Romulans to that list. Oof, that was intensely stressful. I yeah, I'm hitting the cog. It's not doing anything. Huh. Let me get the music turned over. A new scene, so you go down one momentum. Thanks. <laughs> oh, and uh, just for for the, the sake of, of narrative, I will have restored power and set our cloaking device back up. Yeah. Well, the power will reset at the end of the scene. Uh, you just, yeah. But one can assume you put your cloak back up. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kiddick. Yes, sir. Uh, do you are aboard? Actually, you don't have to be on the station. You could be on your ship if you. 
I should change that. It should be a little smaller. Cool. So are you aboard the uh, the salamander or on station? Uh, yeah, the station, I think. Since, okay. uh, since I have an office there and most of my crew are either just doing drills or uh, on shortly. Do you want your ship to be docked or just in system? It could be in system. They're doing drills. They could oh. actually be doing drills. That's nice. Um. So yeah, what is uh, Captain Kitty doing aboard the uh, station? Currently, they're standing in their office, uh, looking through a, uh, a portal, watching the ship do maneuvers way out there, uh, having a uh, something to magnify everything. Uh, probably a an old timey looking uh, watch glass, a looking uh glass. Give me uh, insight command difficulty of one to get a good estimation of how your crew is doing. Starfleet protocols or shipboard tactical systems. I'll give you the second one, yeah. Because that's, that's kind of what you're getting a feel for. Oh, two momentum generated. Uh, taking a look at the, uh, Salamander crew, uh, actually what I should do, so I don't have to keep telling it that it's the Salamander. Yes, that's the token I want. Thank you. Um. You can tell at this point that, uh, now that they've had some chance to come up and get used and have some time to do drills, uh, they're dis- the- Average discipline of the crew aboard has increased from two to three. Yay! They were already pretty skilled people. They had a base attribute of ten for most stuff, but now, in general, the Salamander crew have gotten had time to, between working with the Kismet recently, getting time to do drills here at home, uh, in in safe space, they've kind of gotten better. Cool. All right. Um, they're going to turn back to uh, the desk and uh, look over a uh, a bunch of data pads that just lay there. What to do, what to do. What are we going to work with tonight? Hmm. And they're, they're going to pick a pad and read it, I suppose. Uh, passing by your office door because it's one that because in the command deck you kind of see there's like clear glass windows you can see through unless you tell it to frost on purpose like super private meeting go away or I'm changing uniform go away uh, you can actually see Grennan passing by heading to his office computer open door Get, Grennan as you're walking uh, down the halls the door next to you opens and you see mm -hmm. your, in it's Kiddick's office. Oh. Step into my office, please. Yeah, Captain Kiddick. Uh, of course. Just a moment. <laughs> yeah, I, little... I, I, I think as he's about to, like, you know, he uh, he turns to, like, I assume there's probably, like, an ensign or something outside of Grennan's office, and, like, he hands her a pad. He says, just set this in there. Aye, sir. Like some, sorry, yeah, duty rosters, you know. Oh, it's a little bigger. It's a captain's office for crying out loud. There. Ready room type deal. Oh, oh, full office. It's a proper office. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you guys work here. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. It like, it, 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 oh, is it the kind of thing where, like, our name is on the door even when we're no longer, like, in on ESD? It, more like corporate offices where they have a little slider. Well, it's digital, but they have a little thing. They'll put in the name of whoever's assigned to that room. And when it's done, they clear yeah. it and put in whoever the new person is. Yeah. But the names there are yeah. long before you get there. There's tons of people on ESD 
for this sort of thing. Yeah. Just, uh, just who I needed to talk to. Ah. Well, I wanted to talk to you as well. For just getting familiar, I suppose. Can I get you something to drink, Captain? Uh, sure. Hot chocolate. Oh, um, didn't I bust your console? It's been fixed since then. You, you do not underestimate the powers of ESD engineering. <laughs> I see. Uh, computer, one hot chocolate. One... Well... Brennan, what should I try? Hmm. I haven't tried anything new in years, it feels like. Well, I don't know what you're familiar with. Hmm... Scotch on the rock. Nice choice. And the t the two drinks materialize into existence. Oh, there oh, that, found it. oh, that's a nice... I gotta say, that's a nice contrast right there. How so? Uh, this is just me speaking out of character. Uh, Kiddick orders a, uh, uh, a nice cold drink on the rocks. Grenin orders a... Piping hot uh, chocolate. <laughs> hot beverage. Well, there are different types of softies, I suppose. <laughs> I like that. Anyhow. Yeah, have a seat. I take it that there's something you need to discuss with me, uh, first? No, not really. Just wanted to, uh, see how my fellow stranded, stranded captain is doing. <sighs> if you had something to talk to me about. Yes, uh, and, well, I will admit, time is something of the essence in this matter. Tell me quickly, then. <sighs> An opportunity has been brought to my attention. An opportunity to strike back somewhat at the people who did this to us. Now, I'm sure you're aware. The two of us are not allowed to be involved. Of course. However, should uh, I be able to work my magic on the Starfleet bureaucracy... He looks around and he says, I might be able to have members of my crew with the Kismet enact a mission to retrieve uh, Irene Adler and perhaps strike back at those who have wronged us. The what now? Are you insane? Mm hmm. Jury's Strike. still out. Uh, yeah. Actually, well, should have that doctor looking at you, I suppose. Uh, the, the captain lets out a like lets out a sigh through gritted teeth, and he says, mm, "Doctor's probably not the uh, person who you'd want to criticize the legitimacy of this plan, as she's on board with it." He's Captain suggesting Brennan. it. <sighs> and Kitty downs the scotch uh, in one fell swoop. Uh, you're you're probably going to you're ice probably ice. Uh, going to want another one. I'm gonna have to get the real stuff, and I can't get that here. Are you okay? Hmm. Please go ahead. Go right ahead. Uh, computer, um, uh, program B3, beta 3. The same as, um, uh, as the fleet liens on uh, you ah. earlier. Hmm. 
everything goes quiet in the chamber. Just the, with the right faintest ahead. hint of white noise. Tell me about your plan. It's going to require that the Kismet go on something of a side trip. Now, in order to divert attention from the Kismet's activities, the two of us are going to have to run diversion. I'm listening. The two of us are going to have to find something. uh, Some kind of diplomatic incident, some kind of um, captain-level issue that the two of us can handle together that would pull us away from our ships. Mm -hmm. As such, we won't be involved with whatever our ships get up to when we're not around. I know it makes it seem like I'm setting up my command staff to take the fall should things go awry. Well, per definition, you are. And I wouldn't be doing this if they weren't the ones that came to me and asked for this. They proposed... They proposed... Um going on this mission. I'm just trying to find a way for us to do it without um, uh, without bringing a spotlight to it. And if either of the two of us go along, that's exactly what will happen. Well, you know what we have to do. Enlighten me. Well, you are wanted in the Klingon Empire, aren't you? Uh, GM, am I still technically wanted in the Klingon Empire? Uh, you haven't checked recently, but for one momentum, I'll answer that. Ah, I, I could just go over to a terminal and check that. You could. I'm going to do that. Fine. Give me a reason con difficulty of two. I'm going to spend a momentum. And the station will assist you. Will it, though, because of the program? Did you say Reason Con? Did you say Reason Con? Yes. And the old silent keeps people from listening into the room. He can ask Uh, out to the station. Uh, Is, does Law Focus apply? Yeah. Nice. Okay, I get that momentum back. Get another one. Nice. It's the it has crazy stats. Mm-hmm. Uh, the answer is yes. You're suggesting then that we take the Actually, salamander. Actually, I might be wrong. Hold on, I have to check something. Uh, that's still a yes. Sorry. So, what you are suggesting then is that we take the salamander. And bring me in for a show trial in the Klingon Empire. No, I suggest that we meet in neutral space where we can have a short negotiation and then leave again. We're not bringing you to the Klingon homeworld. We're not bringing you to any Klingon home, to any Klingon world. We're just showing you to the Klingon Empire. All right. Well, we better be prepared for them to, uh, let's say, rather violently demand my return. But I'll then return again, other ships. but then again, uh, it is entirely, uh, that's entirely the purpose to make a somewhat show of this. After all, uh, we're just the distraction. Yes. And no matter how well your crew will do at 
their task. We will be doing ours, and I will leave it at that, and I will not endanger my ship more than necessary. Of course, that's completely understood. Besides, and the captain sighs and sort of slumps back in his chair, I was going to have to deal with this sooner or later. And I think it's good that we do it. <sighs> there's one. There's one more little detail that, well... You're not going to like. Go ahead. In order to pull this off, we're going to need a commanding officer to be in charge of the kismet. And considering command structures being what they are, that's going to have to be penned. I, uh, you were right. I don't like this plan. Right. But... I don't want that man anywhere near the Starfleet Bridge. He's a danger to himself and to Starfleet. <sighs> How long have you known Pend? Well, a few weeks now. I've known Pend for well over a year now. I was there when he began uh, as... Uh, just a regular old con officer, uh, head of flight control, and I watched him ascend to the rank he has now. <sighs> he has a ton. From, I can, from what I can see. Yes. And let me tell you, he has a gift for intelligence. If we're going to be pulling this off, we're going to want someone commanding the Kismet who knows how to run intelligence. Well, it's He's, your... He I'm might good. seem unstable. He is. But when the chips are down, I trust him. Yeah. You do you with your ship. And I will command mine. <sighs> well, I'm probably going to have to uh, hitch a ride with you, so to speak. Yes. You will be uh, put in the in one of our finer diplomatic suites. Thank you, he nods. And he says, well, in the meantime, I have to go to Admiral Nea and ask permission to negotiate with the Klingons. She's going to love this. Go for it. Tell, them I, tell, tell her I said hi. Uh, he does the Picard maneuver as he stands up. <laughs> and uh, could it Riker maneuvers to uh, <laughs> out, out <laughs> Nice. <laughs> I love it. Uh, do you return the, uh, the room back to normal operations? Yes. What? Station e station operations to Captain Kiddick and Captain Grennan, please come in. Kiddick here. Uh, we have, we've been trying to contact you for the last while. Uh, we're scrambling your ships for an emergency rescue mission. It appears that an operative of Starfleet within the 10th uh, is currently in distress in the neutral zone. We're scrambling your two ships immediately to uh, effect rescue. Get your crews in order and get going. Is the Kismet in proper condition to fly? Uh, we're going to leave some of the uh, Starfleet Corps of Engineers to complete their repairs, but at this point, uh, we last we checked, there's warbirds on their tail, and they're the closest ships that are not otherwise tied down, so... Understood. Captain, leave the Kismet. We'll take the Salamander. This will be... Uh... 
to the start to our plans. If we're dealing with warbirds, Captain, we're going to need more than just a Miranda class, no offense. She can handle it. Uh, Captains, can I can I let you go? I go for it. Okay. You, you hear the job. click as they as they release the call. <laughs> It's like, oh, should I be listening to this? <laughs> yes, you you have the room now. <sighs> Listen, if they on. say that if they say that the Kismet is ready to fly, she's ready to fly. Well then, we'll see who gets there first. Definitionally, it would be the Kismet. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Kiddick to number one. Go ahead, Captain. Get back to the station. I'm, I'm coming aboard. Hi, Captain. We're going, uh, we're going Romulan hunting. Captain Grennan to Kismet. This is Utopia Polinia Control. Uh, we're kind of taking care of your ship at the moment. We just got told about the scramble. Uh, what do you want it to do? <sighs> Get all hands ready to depart. I'm going to be returning to the Kismet, put out a call for all Kismet senior staff to return immediately. Uh, before you go, Captain, uh, not to pressure you, but uh, what are we loading up the ship with right now? Because uh, we haven't finished the uh, modification. Are we changing this thing into a missile boat or are we keeping it the way it is? It changes what we're bringing with us because we have to come with you to finish uh, what we're doing. Understood. The Captain looks around thinks for a second it looks like he's about to say something then he stops pauses lets out another breath and he says no changes we're not turning ourselves into a missile boat all right captain standard loadout we'll be on our way uh we'll warp as soon as we get out of dock utopia panisha out And the captain's going to leave the uh, Kiddick's office. And Kiddick's following right behind him. Okay. Uh, as you two full leave. sprint. As you two head back to your ships. New scene. Lose a momentum. Varder and Efrix are snail. Oops. Hmm. Yeah, you know. Efrix and Varder, uh, you two have been enjoying uh, Spain, as I recall. Or the Espana, uh, the, uh, Espana uh, Peninsula. Mm -hmm. uh, where are you? Are you like out in the countryside, in the city, coast? Didn't think that far ahead, I don't know. <laughs> To just bomb, uh, bombing around like Madrid or something like that, or Barcelona. Exactly. We are tourists that have not really spent time on Earth. Yep. So, so yeah, probably, probably Madrid. Yeah, probably the cities. Yeah. Plus, we need to be able to get inside in case <laughs> Varder overheats. <laughs> the Jorans and heat do not go well. Yeah. As you turn a corner, you two see the familiar face of Jessica Solari in the wee hours of the night. Because you're walking around, she's just there. And people are walking around, the three of you, they, you're not really drawing any extra attention because you're just three people in Madrid. There's a lot of people here. Mm -hmm. And that probably just means, you know, well, nod to her and if she's trying to get our attention or anything, then, you know, go from. I've been informed that your ships are about to be on, are about to be scrambled. And it sounds like your kismet is about to fly off at all haste. So I need to know if you're with me, if I'm coming with you, or if I have to go on my own. We've run out of time. Oh, hmm. We haven't even been told of the scrambled yet. We're being scrambled? 
and your like combat anything. just your combat just chirp at you the minute you question her. Uh, would this be kids uh, Grenon calling them or? Uh, probably. Grenon to uh, Doctor Efrix and Lieutenant Varder. We're here, Captain. Efrix here. We need you to immediately report to the Kismet for immediate departure. Ah. Should we invite our friends, sir? Your friend. Oh. Ah. Uh, yes. Kind of raises her eyebrows. Very well, Captain. Look back at Jessica. Oh, wow, that's weird. <laughs> Random chance. I'm assuming that's Captain Out then. One would presume, unless he did, he's just eavesdropping now. Yeah, he just like stays on the line. You know, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> he like sneezes in the middle of our country. We're like, Captain. Oh, this oh, is a sorry. Long shoot. Sorry. <laughs> I was wondering if I could hear breathing somewhere. Just stealthing us. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, presumably, Captain Grenin uh, cuts calm because he has to calm everyone else yes. that's on leave now and get them back to the station. Or, or, or at least calm all the senior staff. Like yeah. all the important people are, yeah, yeah. so then it's their problem to gather their departments exactly yeah. um i assume you have appropriate paperwork or are we just gonna have to wing it with you aboard oh and she she digs into her pocket and what and she looks like she, like what she's wearing like pockets um Minus the backpack and the, you almost, you almost could see her having like a hiking pick or something, but it's mm -hmm. must be stored somewhere else. And you see her pick out out of her pockets and in her hands is a small deck of colored, uh, what look almost like plastic cards, red, blue, green. It takes you a second to recognize the items because it tickles the back of your memory for both of you. Cause you both attended, uh, even Barter attended the brief on Federation laws and regulations and so on. And in the security briefing, you have been told, and Efrix, you would have seen this in a museum, what she's holding in her hands are Federation yeah. identification cards. Huh. From like a whole, like generations ago, from almost a, 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 a century ago. They're yeah. still valid. Federation yeah. still honors them. Yeah, I was going to say, like, the, are they like those like little um, like plastic cards that they put in the computers in TOS era? Yeah. I they look a little more things. advanced than that because it's from the motion picture era, but in essence, it's the same difference. It's just slightly love. more it's upgraded. Like, oh, they're like the like Game Boy cartridges. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> love those things. She holds one out to you, Varder. Uh, you could use that for my identification. Well, uh, you know, I accept that. And... <laughs> oh my god, is every <laughs> single one of those a fake identity? No. <laughs> Can't prove yeah, nothing. <laughs> of course not. Of course not. Some of them are real identities yeah. from other people. <laughs> <laughs> I should know the <laughs> no, name and purpose of who I'm checking onto the ship, though. Uh, so you do you check the do you check the ID card she gave you? Yeah. Okay. Um, funny, uh, you're able to tap this ancient device, not ancient, but this old device, and it has the it has a little digital display to tell you the name. But if you want to, you can just take out your tricorder and scan it, and you can get a full copy of the file. <laughs> rather than playing with the ID card to figure out what it says on it. Yeah, that's probably the easier way to go about it. Because <laughs> I was going to make you do a check if you tried to do it through her actual, like, do it the pro the old-fashioned way. It's like, yeah, you had a course. <laughs> I was sitting there going, yeah, would this be something we're just really used to? I'm like, nah, actually, probably not. I don't think they even use those in Beijing. <laughs> no. That's what the earrings are for. Um... The name on it is Willow Armager. 
just the standard Federation citizen. Yeah, citizen of Earth. Uh, adventure, and her occupation is a uh, recreational hiker and tra- and adventurer, which you know in security terms is a person who just grabs, goes wherever, and climbs and explores planets, usually mm-hmm. within Federation space. I love that that's a job in the 24th century. Yeah, I know. Right, well, that'll work. Um, let's space. get to the nearest transporter pads and get ourselves to space dock and then the kismet. Meanwhile, we have some people to call. Do we? Oh, yeah, yeah we've got our... We're well, head of the department. That, that's once we get to the kismet, I imagine. Yeah. Oh, I, I can, can walk like and five. talk, can't you? <laughs> I can name like five. I don't. Give me presence command difficulty two for each of you. Because you're kind of having to gather your departments from across the planet and the station in yeah. in scramble speed. I Normally, you get like a twelve hour notice for this. Sort I of mean, thing. it's it's not the best, but it's not the worst. Don't worry, uh, Miss Armager is assisting you. Presence command. Um. A, lead by example, because we're going back to the... Yeah. <laughs> nope, I got mm-hmm. nothing. I got, I got, nope. And it was presence command. Okay. Unless and... I can, I can scramble for emergency medicine, but I don't think that's, nope. An increased complication, you could. Nah. Like, it... I mean, you could always do, I'm a doctor, not a logistics expert. Uh, yeah. I don't actually, it's not my lowest stat. Um, I might buff that with one momentum to get a sort of dice. Command's actually, like, pretty decent for me. It's just my presence is not very good. Cat, what are you doing? Sorry. Hey, cat. <laughs> Bye. There you go. She hey. gives you one extra success. Uh, she does not help you, Efrix. She doesn't know uh, the medical, uh, modern medical. She When she gives you help, she tries to tell you, oh, be sure to go through like certain channels, and you realize that her information on how medical departments work is like decades out of date. But security oh. just doesn't really change that much in terms of, yeah. Officers, and they sort out their crewmen that are under them. Uh, that is a total of one, two momentum gained. What was the difficulty? A two. Oh, okay, good. It's just that uh, Solari didn't help you. Yeah, no, that's fine. I just needed to know if I needed that help or not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, between the two of you and Solari, I mean, uh, you're able to uh, scram, get your, you know your cruise will be in place when the uh, ship arrives. Oops, oh god. Nope. <laughs> the entire station moves. <laughs> no! <it's not> <laughs> Captain Kiddick goes over to the salamander, preparing, waiting for the... Oh, gets on the salamander. Efrix, Varder, and Solari appear. Uh, sorry, Armager. Uh, and Grenin, as you finally... As you're heads uh you meet some of the temporary heads of science and flight because uh those two people are still uh missing in action as far as uh officially official records are concerned yeah let me, i i was gonna see who those people would be probably because that's probably um for flight and it would probably wittergast yeah and then it would be Cecil for science. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Right? I mean, yeah. Oh, no. Captain, no. <laughs> Get this spray <sighs> bottle. <laughs> so, you start, uh, Grinnan, as you're waiting for your ship to arrive, it, it won't take very long in a warp from Jupiter to Earth. It's it's a short. It's extreme range to close range in right. space scale. So it's it won't take too long. Um. So you see your uh, senior staff uh, appear minus your XO, and you see this old woman that oh you've met Solari before yeah 
You see uh, Jessica Solari, although she's dressed differently now. Wait, where have I met her before? Uh, you met her on a Klingon planet full of snow alongside... Uh... Oh, god damn it. <laughs> this old, old human. like She must be at least 100-some years old. The captain pauses when he sees her and he says, You! One second, stand by. That's where you've already gone. Oh, you know, Miss Armager. <laughs> it's a kind of don't say any other name. Yes. Hmm. My supper arriving. Saying hi stuff. But anyway. Um so yes. She goes, Sorry, you and she responds, Have we met? I'm Willow Armager. Ah a pleasure. I would hope so. Not often you see uh, a centurion explorer. Hope I'll be of help. I'll promise not to slow you down. And, right. after, and all three of you notice that her whole demeanor has changed. She's acting like a completely different person now. Hmm. Completely different person, or yeah, like she she's we... she's acting like a, her, she's not huddled down. She's not being quiet. She's not furtively looking around as if she's in danger. She's acting like she's eager to come along, and she smiles and. You know, well, but isn't that eat. who we met initially before? Yeah. Yeah. She's going back to friendly tourism mode. Yep. <laughs> so is this everybody? Hello. Yeah. Hello. Yes. That's great. Thanks. Oh, so doctor, you must be the uh, second in command then. Uh. No, 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 my, um, my, uh, EXO is currently indisposed. Oh, okay. Sorry, uh, didn't mean to assume. Efforts, like, I am flattered. looks at the captain, like, quirks an eyebrow. Because that seems to her. <laughs> um, I'll discuss it with you while we're en route. I was about to say, there seems to be a loop and we are outside of it. I'll bring you all in, uh, I'll explain shortly. All right, Captain? Kismet to Captain Grennan. Grennan here. Uh, we're just coming into transporter range of ESD. Uh, we're starting to beam up some of your staff. Do you want us to start beaming up senior staff first, or do you want us to start beaming just everybody? Because we have a full cadre up here, so. Uh, do it in whichever order, um... Uh, do it in whichever order you can, fast as we can. Inform senior staff to report to me, uh, as they arrive. Uh, aye, Captain. Looks at all senior staff in the same room as Brennan minus Yes. <laughs> uh, reporting in, sir. Uh, reporting in, sir? It says you're confused. Say New it. senior staffers. <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I assume there are other, like, minor... I assume there are other, like, minor departments. They answer to the senior departments. Mm. Your senior staff answers to you, so you don't have to micromanage. Yeah. Mm. That's why you have a senior staff for. <laughs> right. I guess Rick's manages counseling and surgery. Mm-hmm. And nursing. Uh, so everyone starts getting transported over. Whoops. The kismet. Yeah. Oh. Um. Hmm. Any time to start. 
Well, actually, what's the brief, Captain? <sighs> uh, currently, um, Pend is confined to the brig. Okay, that's not a reason for scramble. I'm meaning be briefful why we're scrambling. Oh, right. <sighs> it would seem that some uh, rather important Federation assets are currently on the run from Romulans. We're heading to intercept. Do we know who? Not at present. I'm going to do what I can to find out. Um, we're, uh, it's currently taking all of my executive ability just to get us underway as quick as possible. Of course, sir. As the five of you start coming into the conference room and start getting reports from across the ship, yeah, repairs aren't even done. Uh, Starfleet Corps of Engineers is, um, uh, Starfleet Corps of Engineers is going to be on board through this mission, uh, doing their best to complete the, uh, uh, complete adjustments while en route. Grunin here. Uh, bridge here, Captain. Uh, do you want us to, want us to patch in the uh, Captain of Salamander in? Uh, they seem to be ready to go as well. Very well. Make it so. And Captain Kiddick, you see on you are being hailed by the Kismet. Kiddick, I'm the Salamander. And you see the conference room, and you uh, the conference room. You see the face of Captain Kiddick on the uh, screen at the end of the conference room. So what's the plan? <sighs> Uh, our plan is to get underway as soon as possible. I still don't know all the details of this uh, mission. Uh, once we're underway, uh, I'll I'll look through the reports and see what I can put together. All right. Number one, book it. Maximum warp. Isn't it faster than the tractor, the salamander? And the ship is, and the screen goes blank as they move out of hailing range. <laughs> Barter, face palm. <laughs> we'll catch them in five minutes, Captain. Very good. See to it. How to get That's a head start? With a gas problem, not my problem. Uh, Captain Grenin, could you give me insight command difficulty one? Sure. Uh, I'll spend a momentum just so I can have the reroll. Sure. Uh, would any of my focuses work? Team dynamics, maybe. Yeah, I'll give you team dynamics. Uh, you said what command? Uh, insight command. Insight command. Okay, that's like my second best stat. Uh, I'm gonna reroll one of those. Nice, nice. Generate two oh my momentum. God, two nineteens. Uh, you had looking through the pads that have come that have been laid on the council table for you, conference table, and everyone's kind of looking through and checking with like, make sure you have all your stuff because you, a lot of the reports is actually from the core of engineers letting you know that they re their either what they've restocked, what hasn't been restocked, what's been fixed, what hasn't been fixed yet, but they're currently like, there's teams of engineers working on it as you speak, as you're reading and you're getting up like mm -hmm. live updates of what they're up to. Grinning, right. you look over and do you see a lot of the updates overall that are relevant to you as a captain? Cause you're, you have department heads for the, for specifics, right. but uh, personnel is one of the things that comes across. That's a big thing. You need to know who's app, who's a wall, who isn't. There's some people right. who have to grab shuttles to catch up to you. Cause they're like on Ryza or something. Or there's this one guy on Bajor, yeah. and he's gonna have to catch up to you, uh, that sort of thing. Yeah. And there's some, yeah, and actually, people that, yeah, there are probably some people who won't be able to make this particular mission just because they're, des yeah, like on Bajor, yeah, like, they won't be able to join us for this. And there's like, you're actually even getting some reports from ESD, like, hey, by the way, since you'll be short staffed, uh, we're gonna send some people to some staff to make sure that you're not because you're in the heart of Federation space. Right. It isn't hard for them to transfer over a couple of crewmen and petty officers to fill out your ranks so you're not running yeah. on empty yeah. yeah like we probably recalled essential personnel yeah and then everybody who's out of system we just didn't recall so there's one name building. that is not aboard your ship oh commander pend is not listed as aboard your ship or in the brig or in his quarters or on the 
anywhere on the ship. Oh, no. Have fun talking to Giddick about that later. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I mean, just he's not on the ship. He must have been held in space dock is the simple answer. To it. No. Without thinking too much into it, Captain. <laughs> Me saying yeah, Captain, but not actually talking to you as a, as a character there, because I don't think you just <laughs> get the whole... Captain, yeah. Captain taps his comm badge. Captain Grennan to... Uh, uh, wait, are we in communications range of ESD? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, Captain Grennan to Earth Space Dock. Space Dock operations here, go ahead. Uh, do you, uh, would you happen to have the whereabouts of my XO, uh, Reglov penned? Um, apologies, Captain. Uh, I'm going to need a security clearance. Security cl Okay. And the captain, captain, the captain gives his clearance code. Uh, I'm sorry, Captain, that uh, isn't a... Okay. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, is there anything that you can tell me? Um, no, sir. I I don't have the clearance code. I needed yours to unlock the information. I'm looking at a big old classified boarding light. Sorry, I'm not trying to be evasive. I. Uh, right, right, I'm of course. <laughs> uh, of course. Uh, do you know what level clearance would be necessary? Uh, uh, let me do some quick checking here. Uh, let me think about it real quick. Actually, this person will assist you in doing a reason plus con roll, uh, difficulty of two. They're actually helping you with this roll because they're advising you. <laughs> uh, gonna spend a momentum. <laughs> Fricks. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, what con? <laughs> A reason con. Okay. Uh, kind of one of my more meh skills. <laughs> they're, they're actually accomplished. Yes. They're giving you the wrong information. Worst. Uh, this says it requires the clearance there. of a lieutenant. This guy's sitting here going, I'm a trainee. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a kid, I was uh, foreshadowing so, somebody. I'm just covering. Uh, so, uh, I guess we'll spend two to quash it, unless you just want to take it as threat. Uh, you might want to quash it. Okay, we'll quash it. <laughs> Bad suggestion. <laughs> um, the ensign, the ensign on the other end is trying to be helpful, but uh, they spend so much time. They they're like giving you such basic information that it's like that's like first year stuff, and it's like you just. You just ignore him for a while and think about it on your own. And then I'm like, okay. Uh, then I'm like, okay. Just read me the uh, read me the input in col in column three, row forty five of the sheet. Uh, you need someone of your immediate superior or higher, so rear admiral uh, chain. It's it's above your clearance code. It would have been your old uh, your old rank when you were head investigator would have been high enough, but since you've been uh, removed of that higher standing, your clearance code's been demoted as well. Of course, of course. Um, would you be able to put me in contact with Rear Admiral Nia, or uh, one moment, bar or barring that, her uh, liaison? Stand by. I'm trying to contact one of her staff. Uh, there's a lot of. It's very busy up here, sir. Sorry about this. Nope, nope, understood, but I hope you understand my need to reach my XO in this particularly bombastic situation. Of, of course, sir. I'm really sorry about this, sir. It's not your fault. Oh, I got someone. Uh, it's not the Admiral. It's a, uh, what does it say? Commander uh, assigned to, wait, hold on. It's, uh, oh, Fleet Liaison, uh, Gene. Joan. Uh, I'll patch him in now, sir. <laughs> the captain The captain just sort of is, is doing the thing where he, like, he, he's wrapping the, the four uh, his four fingers of his right hand against his cheek. Uh, Commander Joan's face appears on the, uh, he seems to be in an office somewhere. 
and there's a lot of people moving around behind him. <sighs> Sorry to bother you. I know how hectic things are, but uh, we're preparing to depart, and I can't seem to locate my XO. Any attempts I've made to have been stonewalled. Uh, wait. Are you still in system? What are you still doing here, Captain? With all due respect, warp now. We're still, um, we're still preparing to leave. If you weren't aware, the kismet is still barely functional. You're, uh, oh, deep breaths. All right. And Be understand, on. and understand leaving without my executive officer even under emergency situations, is a bad idea. Uh, you can roll opposed. He's trying to tell you something. Uh, you can roll insight command, opposing something he's doing. As he tells you something, but it not, might not be the most accurate information. Okay. Jones uh, this sort of thing. <laughs> uh, I'm going to spend three momentum for four dice. I'll spend three threat. Oh, no. Insight command, you say? Yeah. Actually, no. You know, um... Mm, no, I don't have a value that'll come into play here, so... No, I'm not spending my... You can always go for mission direction. <gasps> oh, I've got a better idea. I'm going to spend my determination, Spirit of Discovery. I get three additional momentum, I'm going to buy a fifth die. <laughs> Fair enough. Yep, that, that is a valid... No, you still need a value to... Same I do? Play. Yep. Never mind. <laughs> okay. uh, I never get to use this thing it's awesome when you get to use it though you don't have a value for talking to someone hold oh. you gain three moments <laughs> very good myth <laughs> <laughs> Must be the android brain of hers. Uh, yeah. Math. We Basic math. math. <laughs> um, well, Captain Grennan, I will have to tell you that uh, at this point, he has been reassigned. We haven't gotten around to telling you yet. You'll have to make do with uh, Lieutenant Commander Efrix. The minute he says that, Captain Grennan, light, it's just immediately comes, it's weird to you because of, no, because Starfleet regulation, doctors aren't XOs normally. Unless there's a special provision by the Admiral, which he can't do because he's too low rank. Fleet liaison can't assign stuff like that. Nia would have to do it. Or one of her, or her strategic operations officer, who is like a captain. This is Nia's call. I, uh, uh, Captain, request permission to board your ship and I'll fill you in as long as we get going. Understood. This commander on the ship will just kidnap him into the position. And Joan, you see Joan step out of out of screen as one of them, one of the one of his aides, kind of goes, uh, "He's heading to a transport room, uh, Captain." All right, and he turns to a uh, Witter Gas. He says, "Prepare the Kismet for immediate departure, maximum warp. As soon as Commander Joan is aboard, get us out of here." We'll need to reestablish contact with the salamander as we pass them, Captain, to give them a ride. See that it's done, Barter. Captain. Uh, Efrix, Efrix, for the moment, you do what you do best. Get down to sickbay. I'll call you if I need you to. <sighs> he sighs. Assume duties as exo of this ship. Yes, sir. Everett's heads out, I assume? Yes. Oop. The captain looks at Cecil. Nope. He says, captain. What a day. Stop it. Indeed. <sighs> well, we have our jobs to do. Yes, sir. I will make the necessary preparations. Very good, and he smiles. Dismissed. Stop it. Thank you, sir. And as soon as the room is empty, the captain just sits there in the uh, in the room, and he just sort of slumps forward and smacks his head on the table. For two momentum, 
you might have you can have the advantage that you get a break. As in something is gonna be in someone's gonna be extra helpful. To you. <laughs> yes, uh, you get a break. Literally, your skull. <laughs> I feel like Brennan needs this right now. Uh, yeah, can we please spend two momentum for me to get yeah, let's do it. <laughs> oh, look. Hey, look, it's a person. It's a person? It's a person. Your view screen, then. Uh, Captain Brennan, we're getting a hail from uh, Starbase 21. It's Admiral Nia. Ah, on sunscreen. On screen. You see Nia's face appear on the far screen? Uh, Admiral. Captain, I've been informed by Joan that you are taking him along. Indeed, I apologize for the forceful manner in which I'm, I wouldn't say insisting, but uh, in which I uh, wrenched the information out of him, but it's my understanding that you've reassigned my XO. Functioning without one is not in the best interests of this ship. Well, unfortunately for you, Captain Grennan, I make that decision, not you. Commander John will brief you on the specifics. I've given him clearance to tell you, and only you. Of course. And this is a name milk run, Grennan. I wouldn't expect it to be, given that... God, the kismet's barely even functional and you're sending us out there. It must be really important. Captain, just so you're aware, this line is encrypted, uh, but the assets, I Joan will go into the details of this. However, I can tell you this much. We have some high value assets coming our that ah. must be collected at all costs for the good of your mission both before and after you arrived at Earth. Understood? Un understood. Very good. I hope to hear good reports after you're done. <sighs> All right. Anything else? Nothing from me. Okay. I'll get the debrief from Joan. Brennan out. Never a dull moment. And he just looks out the window as I assume the kismet goes to warp. High warp. We changed scenes one last time. Uh-oh. Is this Kiddick's office? Oh, no. Oh, a Starfleet no. Admiral stares out a window. He's an alien race that very few know about or have ever seen before. He stands on an old, in an old ship uh, configuration. The door opens and in steps a certain commander. <sighs> the animal's silver mercurial eyes kind of focus on you as he stare, seems to stare through you. His skin, a gray pallor, his hair as if metal. Commander Pend, I presume? Correct. Uh, who do I have the pleasure of speaking to, Admiral? Well, Commander, I believe I am captured captain. From your overwhelming force of arm and skill, I have been bested. Glances out the window again. Looks back at you. I an Admiral Raven Trailblazer. You now have command of the USS Victoria. 
Oh, fuck. You destroy my ship, Commander. Someone, I may not be the one that destroys you, but someone certainly will. That isn't a threat, that's a fact. Well, let's hope it doesn't come to that. He motions to the chair. Okay. Your orders, Commander? Plot course to Narendra Station. Shall we go by normal space, or are we temporarily uh, dry, uh, jumping there? I'll send, the, right. I'll send the communications ahead, then we'll temporal jump. All right, I'll get around. I'll get it done. Thank you. He steps out of the office. I will use my personal line to contact Azalon. Her face appears on screen. Lover, it's a pleasure to see you again. Son? You seem to be... doing well? And she looks around wherever, at, like, at the stuff around you, but she can't see a whole lot. Uh, yes, I thought I would <laughs> deliver you a nice prize. Oh, and what prize is that? I assume it isn't that collector's plate behind you. No, <laughs> it's a little gaudy for me, but since the Federation's pants are a little down due to your actions, I thought I would give you the Victoria. And when she smiles, it's a smile you've never seen her have. It is this almost sadistic glee on her face as her antennae seem to stand on end and she just her eyes seem to light up at the mention of the ship name. Yes, they seem to trust me implicitly after I temporarily handed them a former crew member. Hmm. We shall make great use of this ship. Oh, I also have an Admiral Trailblazer. Commander, I think... Uh, sorry, I shouldn't say Commander. Captain, I think you will do well in the new polity. Get here as soon as you can. We'll be there extremely soon. Azalon out. And now comes to Trailblazer to engage Temporal Drive. Oh, right. You all the air in the room seems to cool as if every bit of heat is being drawn away. It isn't freezing, but it's just this weird tingling feeling everywhere. Like, heat just stops being emitted by everything, and every bit of deck plating is sucking the heat out. Like, everything's a heat sink now. And the ship vanishes from view. And that is the end of the episode.